Police interceptors. Police! The pride of the northeast. Lock your protection water beetle. Yeah, been run. And scourge of the criminal class. We are high, man! Open the door now! Hands out! Hands out! Hands out! We're up close and personal with Durham and Cleveland's crime fighting elite. In pursuit, off road, lethal list. And in the air. We've got a group of five runners, five runners Nation Road now. With their crack firearms team. Oh, please! Oh! And formidable dog unit. Stand still, please, you do it! In the trenches. For the war on crime. Strap in. I am in pursuit. You're riding with the interceptors. They'll be filling the pants. Stay there! We'll be filling the cells. Coming up. Hello, we've got a vehicle pursuit for real if anybody's able to assist. An underage driver tries to outrun the cops. One out, one foot. An armed raid in Stockton. Come out, come out. Keep going, keep going. And a gobby suspect. Not this emergency? I've got some burglars in my garage. Do you know how many people are there? No. <laughs> Put your hands above your head and stand perfectly still. <laughs> the interceptors aren't fond of any type of villain. Get out. Go, 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 go. But if there's one crime they really despise, get on your knees now, both of you. It's burglary. I can't think of anything worse. You know, you people work hard to have the houses, to have the prized possessions to have the things that they've worked hard for and somebody feels that they can just come along and break into your house and just take it. Right, mate, police your dog. Stand up now and show yourself. It's just a horrible crime. Mm -hmm. You know, to know that somebody might have been in your house. Is it him? Huh? You got him. Rummages through your house, through your prized possessions, through your own private life, and that's uh, just it's just wrong, it's just disgusting. It's the early hours of the morning, and interceptor Liam Sewell is blue lighting it to the scene of a suspected burglary. Just had a report come in from um, Grangetown. Males there with balaclavas on, trying car doors. Um, the latest update is now they're in the, um, the back of the property. It's believed to belong to an elderly lady, and we've got to believe now that they're trying to break in this old lady's house. Like most of his colleagues, Liam's no fan of burglars, and with tracker dog Titan on board, he's hoping to collar one. And Liam's not the only one playing Hunt the Burglar. 4-2 Semper Park, make my way to the area as well from Groveville. Also en route is Ben Sutcliffe. He's playing catch-up, but Ben's an advanced driver in a 150 miles per hour BMW. And he's making time. Every available unit is heading to the scene of the alleged burglary. With the burglars, you, you get every man and his dog goes, literally every man and his dog will go to it. Because everyone loves it. Everyone likes getting hold of a burglar. Liam arrives just behind a van load of coppers who are also on the hunt. They're looking for four men who they suspect have gone to ground. And the best way of finding them is Liam's tracker dog, Titan. He always gives the game. Yeah, Roger, we're there for Taking Liam for a walk, Titan leads the interceptor to the rear of a property. Point nine, Becky, do you think they're still in the gardens? Then news over the radio. They've caught one suspect. Yeah, have you got him to turn? Yeah, them in the garden, yeah, stand by. But that still leaves three more. One with a blue hat coming out the front of where you are, Liam. And they're heading straight towards Liam and Titan. Dogs are you at the front, can you see my car? Just three in the garden, Liam. But the suspects are nowhere to be seen. 
Yeah, I'm on the corner point. I think I can. And then he spots the men. <laughs> Stand still, please, you dog! One legs it down an alley. Stand still! Stop him! And while Liam makes an arrest, Titan takes off after the runner. And the third lad sees sense and gives himself up. Yeah, Becky, how are we out? Dog's going after one. Liam leads his suspect away and calls Titan back from his unsuccessful pursuit. Titan! They've now got three suspects nicked. Yeah. Walk out there, mate. One outstanding. Other officers have the man who gave himself up and the lad, Liam Collard, soon has a pair of cuffs to go with his blue hood. Right, in on you. And he's not very happy about it. Get off it! I'm with three marks for you. I want to see your face. Watch it. Watch it. Kick off with her again, mate. Kick off with her again, you're getting bit, all right. Hey, listen, mate, next time I see you drown, you can't. Yeah, what? It. Big mistake. Dirty little. <laughs> the cops hate spitting. <laughs> and Ben arrives just in time to help with the gobby hoodie. <laughs> You're a dirty get. That's what you are, mate. You're going to arrest police as well. I'm sorry, did we do it in? He did, you just spot out. Did you do in? He did. He did me in the face. Nice. Got your dirty slaver in my face. Have to see the vet now, Warner. Yeah. Face down in the tarmac, the hooded hard case is now the spitting image of a defeated man. You're going to be calm, yeah? Yeah, mate. And with Ben on hand to keep him in his place... Put your legs flat, put them flat, keep them flat. Liam's free to search for the remaining suspect. Ah, oh, look. I think the lad's gone over here. That's recent first damage. The dogs took us straight in here. While the manhunt continues, the suspect who gave up is in the back of the van and also not happy. But it could be worse. Right, Bonnie lad, I'm going to give you the warning now, all right? Yeah. If you try and spit at me, I am going to put you face down on the floor, all right? Do you understand? Yeah. Good man. A search for the fourth suspect proves fruitless. Up you get. Good man. But three out of four ain't bad. Despite his successful morning's work, the fact that Liam's been spat on has left a sour taste in his mouth, along with the phlegm on his face. He's spat at us. He's got us in the cheek, you know, just a dirty, filthy animal. But he'll come again. We, we'll see him again. Just absolute filth. The gobby hoodie was found to have breached the terms of his prison release and was recalled to prison to serve the rest of his sentence. No further action was taken against him or the other men arrested in relation to the suspected burglary. Being an interceptor is a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. Which is why they carry a good supply of antiseptic. Can you touch any of them? Still to come. Beagle is making off. Spike stops a suspected burglar. Give me hands! 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 As Jacko loses a drunk driver. Where's it gone? Ah. And our cameraman... Stop there, mate. ...catches a criminal. Jacko! Where's yours? I've got him. Last year, almost 30,000 under-18s were convicted or cautioned, with 1,600 of these sentenced to custody. Out the car! Get your hands where I can see them! Behave yourselves! As the people who catch the juvenile delinquents, the interceptors have their own theories about why kids commit crime. The people who I'm dealing with are starting to get younger and younger. I actually think that that could be because who their role model's been. There's another phrase of monkey see, monkey do. Kids see what their parents have done, then they then develop that way themselves. Because they're not used to authority. They're not used to being told, no, don't do that. Don't climb on that. Get off that roof, for example. Or, or don't drive granddad's car, you know? Sometimes, um, in my opinion, some folk think they've got a God-given right just to do things.
It's early evening, and interceptors Paul Jackson and Simon Kessel are on the late shift. They're looking for a silver car which had earlier been involved in an alleged hidden run. But it's nowhere to be seen. In fact, it's a bit quiet. But Jacko's got a sneaky suspicion there's some action just around the corner. I do fancy that we're going to go for two tonight. Yeah. 20 year veteran Jacko's favourite subject at school was PE, and he still enjoys having a run around after rungans. While Simon loved his T square in technical drawing lessons and still likes covering all the angles. As the dynamic duo drive through the town of Ferry Hill, seven miles south of Durham, a silver Astra flies around the corner and speeds off. Jacko buries his size nine and soon has the Astra in his sights. Hello, we've got a vehicle pursuit for real if anybody's able to assist. Hello, the vehicle just flew through. Uh, through you. You've got a vehicle standing at the sun, very hill. 2547, you've got a vehicle behind. Left, 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 right, conditions are right. The driver's performing handbrake turns around corners and clearly can't control the car. If there's any uh, units local and can drop on the local, on the 200, sorry. Speed 50. Thankfully, the roads are clear and the driver's speed is fairly low. Jacko needs to keep him contained and guide other units in. Speed 40, The driver then ducks into an estate. He could be trying to bail out. It's just made off. Yeah, he just made off as soon as it saw the mark face vehicle. Doing a left, left, left. Into. Yeah, stand by for a decamp. The driver is clearly lacking experience as he loses it on another corner. Where we are? Oh, yeah, still showing his pants but road. But he thinks he's a rally driver and tries to pull another handbrake turn. Zero. Still no race, no vehicles about, road conditions are fine. But it's one too many and finally loses control and he's off on foot. Jacko's after him like a greyhound out of a trap. Our cameraman stuck in the back of the cop car. Finally free, he legs it in search of Jacko. But instead, discovers someone else. Stop there, mate. Jacko! 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 I've got him. Where's he at? Where was he? That's what you call a citizen's arrest. Stick your hands off for us. Who are you? But he's not playing ball. Put your hands off. Now. Stop bothering about your face. Yeah. The youth fits the description of the lad who legged it. Hello, I've got the driver detained. Who are you? Who are you? All the commotion has alerted the house owners and they've come to take a look. <laughs> well, we will need transport for one. Stand up, young man. And he appears to be too young to be behind the wheel. Right. This one in time, you're not on suspicion of theft of vehicle. Fail to stop. Dangerous drive. Yeah, so you don't have to say market. anything. But to me, Army Defence, if you do not mention one question, something will say it around the court. Anything you do say, maybe give them evidence to understand. What's your name? What's your name? Get that camera out of my face. What's your name? Turn the camera off. No. They also suspect he's connected with the earlier hit and run. For real, and there was a, a male yeah, named as a possible dri no. driver. Can you uh, tell us who that was, please? Jack, are we thinking about the, the Astra Stroke Golf Octavia? Yeah, he's not saying who he is. I suspect it's probably that lad. And a local officer soon confirms Jacko's suspicions. Yeah, is he disqual? Uh, or is he wanted for anything on. else? I don't think he was old enough to have a license, but uh, stand by and I'll try and find the other uh, and log and have a look at the details. I don't know that, do I? Yeah. 
Yeah. Don't know that though, do I? No. I've got one middle pocket. I see. It was meant to be. It turns out he's actually 16, but still a year below the legal driving age. Yeah. They're delighted to get this juvenile joyrider off the road. The standard of driving from this driver was absolutely appalling. He clearly didn't know how to drive properly. I imagine he was driving like that all night, and it wasn't because we're in the pursuit. I think his just driving was just all around terrible. We've had reports earlier on in the evening about a silver car that's been driving erratically all over the place, so I've no doubt that that's him. And he's underage, he shouldn't be driving, he hasn't got a licence, and clearly he doesn't know how to drive, as he demonstrated there. And Mystic Jacko's earlier premonition came true, big time. Come to Ferry Hill, just have a move around and look for the car, and I had a bit of a feeling in my water tonight that we would end up in a car chase. And this vehicle's gone past us, had a quick look in, looked at the driver, and I just knew instantly I thought we'd game on all day long. And we've had a pursuit around the streets of Ferry Hill. It hasn't been particularly high speed, but it's certainly been dangerous. Um, he's driving it like Grand Theft Auto, he's ragging it around corners, handbrake turns, um, never getting away, never in a million years. He's locked up, that car's off the road, and there's going to be nobody else knocked over at night in Ferry Hill, so very happy. The youth was later convicted of driving with no licence or insurance, dangerous driving and failing to stop. No further action was taken in relation to the alleged hit and run earlier. He was given an eight-month referral order, fined £105, including costs, and disqualified from driving for 12 months once he's able to apply for a licence. And he wouldn't have been caught without our cameraman. Sure. All the commotion has brought the neighbours out. Yay! Yay! See what they like. One is very happy to see her favourite interceptors in the flesh. <laughs> Thanks. You're very welcome. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Did I run to be an <laughs> Good night. Mid-afternoon and Spike is on the lookout for two suspected burglars in a silver Clio. He's in stealth mode in an unmarked Beamer. We've had a couple of hours ago a report of uh, what we call a bogus official burglary, uh, which is where um, somebody will knock on an old person's house or any person's house and report that work needs to be done on that house. For example, um, oh, I'll cut your trees down. That's happened um, up in concert. The person gone into one of the houses and actually stolen the old lady's handbag. We've now got information as to which car this person is allegedly in, and we're now desperately trying to find it. Um, NPR information suggests uh, that the car is heading our way. Spike has witnessed some pretty despicable behaviour in his 20 years on the job, but this type of burglar really makes his blood boil. This crime, I believe, is about the lowest of the low. Vile, cowardly. The suspect car has been seen heading south, so Spike plots up and waits for it. Triple three, I am now static, A167 southbound um, at Plawsworth, just opposite the jet garage. And right on cue, the Clio makes an appearance. Just left this here. All units, all units from Tango 333. I have eyes on the subject vehicle. It is at the roundabout, two persons in it, at the roundabout at the Red Lion, indicating right, right, right. This is the vehicle that we believe is responsible. As he's in an unmarked car, Spike blends in and bides his time while other units race to join him. Our plan now is that I'm trying my best to direct other units uh, to this. All units in the area are heading towards Spike. The more cars involved, the more options they have to stop the suspect motor. Spike, I'm just 167 now. I'm trying to get ahead of him, it's like we've the deploy stinger. An officer's heading to the next town with a stinger. A bed of nails thrown in front of a car to puncture its tyres and bring it to a stop. Spike's now right behind the Clio and dog handler Ian Squires 
is just up ahead, but the driver doesn't seem to have noticed anything untoward. He hasn't been spooked by Squires' he's van, so we're approaching the roundabout. Approaching the roundabout. Let's uh, still go for your stinger. They're just half a mile from the town centre where the stinger trap is set. Squires, he speed up. The reason being is I need a gap between the I need a gap between the Clio um, and the white car that's in front of it for Chubbs to sting it. You're gonna have to be a good shot. As the Clio drives into the town, it looks like it's heading straight towards the stinger. But the driver turns off the main road. Get left. Into Oak Street. Into Oak Street. Spike's going to have to find a different way to make the stop. Andy Garside, block the exit. Block the exit. The Clio driver finally seems to twig that something's wrong. Vehicle is making off. But Spike's colleague, Andy Garside, has blocked the end of the street. Coming hands! 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 The two men in the car have got nowhere to go. You're arrested in Elm Street. You're under arrest on suspicion of a burglary. You don't have to say anything, but it may have your defence. If you don't mention one question, anything which you need to rely on in court, you do say maybe given evidence. Do you understand? Do you have anything on you that you shouldn't have? Right? While Squizy has a route through the car, Spike runs the driver's details through the police computer. Oh, and you're disqualified from driving. Jackpot. Um, let's have this car recovered forensically in relation to the uh, the burglary at the old person's house. Um, and also, clearly, he's got no documents. There are also some outstanding charges on the passenger and a few suspicious items in the motor. A few bits found in the car. Um, Obviously, non blokey stuff, if you like, some, some ladies' um, items, handbags, watches, uh, jewellery, that kind of thing. Mind your head. It's been a good afternoon's work all round. Job well done. Teamwork. Teamwork is what got the result there. Um, he ducked down that back alley. Fortunately, the car was up, was up behind us. I had the feeling he was about to do what he did, and then instructed the car behind us to block the exit, okay, okay, which is exactly what we've done. Back at the station, the team have found something on the passenger. This is what the passenger has. 600. He was convicted of attempted burglary, burglary and theft of a motor vehicle, and was sentenced to two years in prison and ordered to pay a victim surcharge of £140. No further action was taken against the driver in regards to the burglary offence. However, he was convicted of driving whilst disqualified and was given a sentence of 15 weeks imprisonment, suspended for 18 months, and was disqualified from driving for three years once his current ban ends. Jobs like this are why the interceptors go to work. On our own, we're not brilliant. Put us together, we're a fantastic team. We're protecting the communities here. We've had a, a walk-in burglary that happened during daylight. That's very rare. And on the same day that that happened, we've got two persons arrested. This really is packed, which is what we stand for, police and community together. Coming up, Liam uncovers some illicit substances. And there's a little bag of white powder in there that we believe to be drugs. An overdressed drunk driver. Centipede will require fewer socks than you. And a suspect. What's your name, buddy? It's John. Who can't remember his own name. I don't believe who you are, you're saying you are, anyway. Jamie Reeves. Jamie Reeves. Or Zach. Jamie. Jamie or Zach. It's pub kicking out time, and Jacko is on patrol with rookie Rachel Bennett. They've spotted a car outside a bar, and Jacko's spidey sense is telling him a potential drink driver is about to get behind the wheel. So they've parked up just around the corner. Could just be a designated driver, but 
if you don't look, you don't find here. It's a bitter northeast night, which makes drink driving even more likely. Nobody wants to stand out waiting of a taxi in this weather. It is minus four, and sometimes people take the risk, even though it's only a short walk home. Jacko's hunch proves spot on. As seconds later, a man jumps into the driver's seat and speeds off. He's quick round there. And in the words of Jacko and Rachel, it's a pursuit. It's a pursuit. Elliot from Tango 316 Urgent, got a vehicle failing to stop in uh, Shildon. Try and get your feet or edge. The motor has headed into a maze of residential streets, and Jacko has to guess where it's gone. The speedy getaway driver has had a significant head start. Jacko now has to navigate his beefy beamer through narrow, winding back roads. Where's it gone? The car's disappeared. Ah! It's a total loss presently. It was dark coloured Passat estate, I believe. Jacko may have lost sight of the car, but he's hopeful someone else can locate it. Can you get Sheldon CCTV to monitor Church Street and Sheldon just had a vehicle made off dark coloured Passat estate? I need to have a direction of travel, please. While Jacko searches the streets, CCTV operators have spotted something. Let's come on to the main street and then went down Albert Street. It was definitely an estate vehicle. Um, do you think a golf estate? Quite possible. This was Rachel's first pursuit. No. I'm sorry, you popped your cherry in the most disappointing <laughs> car chase of all time. But this rookie is still hopeful that it can end up with a suspect in cuffs. Hey, oh, it's still early. As they cruise around the back streets, Jacko spots a car that looks like the runaway. You know, it is a nice stuff, that, is it? I wouldn't have put it as an Audi like, but. Mm. Nah, exhaust yeah, freezing. Is it? The car's exhaust is as cold as Jacko's trail. But then a local cop calls to say he spotted the suspect motor. Have you got a driver with it? Yes. But once again, the driver's performed a disappearing act. Yeah, LA has just uh, turned around. I've got a driver, I've got out. I'm just going to have a look down the street. I've uh, just turned around, he must have uh, quickly gone out. Although the officer didn't get the driver, he has got his name and address from the car registration. And Jacko and Rachel are soon outside. I've just literally followed it. It's come down here and uh, it's pulled up as I've turned round. One of the, uh, the ladies on the corner just said he's gone into this house. Ran in. What? It's time to try to put a face to the mystery driver. Hello, Hello. police. Is this your car outside? Sorry? The Passat, is it your car? The VW? VW? Yes. Which one? The grey one. The one with the lights on. Somebody's just walked in this house after getting out of that car. Is there only you in? <laughs> Are you the only person in this house? Yes. The man claims to be home alone. Do you want to come down so I can have a chat with you, please? Well, there are others in the house. So you're not here by yourself? Sorry? Who's just come in your front door from it's that just, car? Uh, my my car, but uh, I me. think one of the, one of them is been driving. The man is the owner, but claims he's not the elusive driver. It's to somebody's upstairs. We just oh, think he's the driver. Oh, somebody upstairs now, is there? Whilst Jacko checks upstairs for the driver. No, no, he's driving. It's this guy. He's Who's driving. driving? The man now claims he's actually in the kitchen, and Rachel is onto him. He's been driving, yeah. It's your car. It's my car and I sold it to him. And the man decides to come clean. Yeah, no more thanks. Has it cough for his driven it? He said he's been driving the car and he's just come in the house with it. Right, mate, you're locked up on suspicion of failed to stop dangerous drive. Okay, stick your hands out for us. How long since your last drink, last alcoholic drink? This morning. This morning. This morning. Excellent. That's great That's news. Four. Like Where were the keys at? He's put. He's got them from behind the um, awesome. sofa. Awesome. Just a second, please. Come, we'll get you a seat out time, yet. Even though the man claims he hasn't had a drink since this morning, he blows over the limit. 
so he's off down the nick. It's a job well done for Jacko and the rookie. The fist bump, it's a bit of Dempsey make pace going on. I've never been out her before, she's a lucky charm. <laughs> so I'll have that. I would have given you the arrest, but uh, nah, that doesn't happen. Uh, <laughs> you just fell over. <laughs> yeah. That's a bit of karma, that. <clears throat> the station breath test machine confirms the roadside test. You've blown 65, so about twice the limit, OK? He's also five times over the necessary amount of socks, keeping his feet toasty on this freezing night. Centipede would require fewer socks than you. Also, it's very cold. What does? This car wash worker will have to stick to washing cars, not driving them. Turns out he's already wanted for drink drive uh, earlier. Um, he didn't bother appearing at court, so he's a habitual drink driver. He's done the same before and he hasn't bothered to turn up at court and now he's living up here in our area, treating our roads as a race track. No regard at all for, for other road users, just doesn't give a damn. He's driven like an absolute nutter to get away. My first pursuit and it's nice to get a lock up and a drink drive up the road. And you're a lovely charm, mm. it was all down to you. <laughs> The man was found guilty of driving without a license or insurance and drink driving. He was fined £120 plus an £85 victim surcharge and disqualified for 36 months. It's Friday night and Liam Sewell is taking part in a cross-border firearms operation involving officers from both Durham and Cleveland. Got some information received that there's a male in Stockton. He's got firearms in his address. So we've got a firearms team together, got a warrant, and we're going to go and search that under the Firearms Act. The information is, is that these are viable firearms, capable of obviously firing bullets and committing serious harm or death. Liam will be using his sniffer dog, Louie, to search for firearms and items such as drugs and cash that could be linked to criminal activity. Little PD Louie here, who's trained to search for firearms. This will make it a lot quicker than doing a finger sip search with officers and hopefully um, we'll be able to identify where the firearms are hidden because uh, they won't just be laid about. I've got the warrant, so we need a unit here, right? And we need units around here stopping all this lot. Are you happy with that? Yep. On arrival, the method of entry team gets ready to move. Our camera operator has been told to stay well back, given the potential dangers involved. But as they approach the front door, the suspect comes outside. Watch him. Watch him. And is quickly arrested. Watch him, lad. But that's not the end of it. The police suspect there may be an armed man inside. However, the house appears to be empty. So far, things are going to plan. As we report to the address, our subject has come out, come to the front door where he's being challenged by the armed assets. And he's immediately surrendered, you know, given a couple of guns pointed at his face, he's likely to. After that, we've kept the containment on the house and there was a bit of an issue with regards to another male in the house. And we've established he's now out walking a dog. So what the lads are doing now is a deliberate search of the address with the actual firearms, just to double check and confirm that the property is empty of subjects. Once that's done, they'll probably be handed over to himself to search with Lee's dog, Louis. Half an hour later, Liam gets the green light. Go for it, nine dollar. Go ahead. Yeah, just let you know, I've uh, spoke to Sergeant Carter and he's happy for me to start the search with a specialist dog of the house. Find it. Louis's first port of call is the living room and he's soon on to something. So that's his indication there, he's just froze on the spot. Who's the boy, Louis? We'll have a look what he's froze on there. Let's have a look what it is. Ah, he's trained on cash as well as drugs. It's a bundle of cash in a cigarette box. Well done, Louie. You found some cash. If you find the firearm, son, you get the cheeseburger, don't you? Hey. Upstairs, Liam and Louie notice an unusual hole in the ceiling. That's oh, just a hole into the loft. And a weapon. It's obviously for chopping up this chicken. 
Talking of chicken, Liam and Louie's next stop is the kitchen, which is full of tasty discoveries. So we found a large amount of cash there. You've got some plastic bags. There's a big bottle full of cash in the corner, a wallet in the cupboard... Wallet full of cash. ..and another bag of cash on top of the cupboard and a safe. So I'm going to guess that there's cash in that safe. We'll get him to open up that safe for us, otherwise we'll have to force it open. Come, in, come here with a warrant to search his address, leaving this um, gentleman as possession of criminal property. And when we see lots of cash lying around, you know, just it obviously makes us think, you know, he's a criminal. And Louis's nose is continuing to twitch. Some illegal drugs. Louis's not actually trained on Subutex. But he's shown us a lot of interest up and around here, trying to work out what this is. And we've got a packet of what I believe to be Subutex. Subutex is an opioid, which is illegal to supply or to possess without a prescription. And Louis's onto something else. It smells like he's getting something in the cupboard there. So we'll have a look in. Oh, it was a boy! And we've got a little bag of white powder in there. That we believe to be drugs. It's a great find, but still no firearms. We're still looking for these firearms. Um, Louis had a good night anyway because he's got lots of rewards for his ball, which is always nice, isn't it, son? There's one room left to search, but as there's a dog in it, Liam will have to search himself and soon spot something behind the cage. Hey, pups. Yes, yeah, so we've got a lovely dog here, a nice bulldog. And um, just behind that, we've got a little uh, weapon in its case in here. We'll get it checked out by the firearms team. It's an air rifle, not as lethal as the weapons they've been told were in the house, but nevertheless, it's been a successful job for Liam and Louis. The search is just really starting now. Um, Louis just tries to narrow down the areas, and he's, you know, he's knocked on some cash, he's knocked on some drugs, so it's been a good day for him. The lad's been locked up on suspicion of possession of Class A drugs, and we'll see where we go from here. Following an investigation, officers couldn't link the man arrested to the drugs found, so no further action was taken in regards to the drugs. Overall, the search uncovered cash worth nearly £14,000, and the arrested man is currently under investigation by the Economic Crime Unit. Still to come, a dodgy driver... How can you give me false details, kid? I was fine at them. Why? Cos you're drunk, though. No, I'm not drunk, though. ..with criminal taste in music. <laughs> One Direction. Is this yours? Hey, are you a 1D fan? Rongans will say anything to try to avoid getting nicked. When I'm trying to say <laughs> So one skill the interceptors need is the ability to spot a liar. People say you not only to rely on like your sixth sense in a bobby's nose. I mean, it's a phrase that's used, you know, quite often. But it's been proven to work on many, many occasions. Believe it or not, this isn't day one for me being a bobby, you know. Been doing this for a long time. I knew that ten minutes ago. Over years of practice, you tend to have the ability to, to spot when somebody's telling you a lie. When someone normally says perfectly honest with you, officer, it means completely opposite. And if it's a lie, they tend to make a mistake. If you're telling the truth, you'll never ever tell the story differently because it's the truth. It's the night shift and Liam Sewell is on the hunt for dodgy drivers. And as he scours the streets south of the town centre, he pulls over a Vauxhall, which comes up as having no insurance. It's a Vauxhall Vectra, so the keeper is Zach Reeves. A woman gets out of the passenger seat, but it's the driver of the car, reportedly owned by a Mr Zach Reeves, who Liam's interested in. Yeah, Roger. What's your name, buddy? It's John. John. Brown. John what? John Brown. John Brown. Where are you from, John? Middlesbrough. Liam has some bad news for John Brown from Middlesbrough. Whose car is it, John? Mine. Yours. It's got no insurance, mate. I don't know. No. What's your date of birth? 26. Yeah. Of 4th, 92. Hello. Just hang on a sec here, mate. Please. Don't mind. Pull up. Anyone John. What's your date of birth? Yeah. No, it's, 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 I don't believe you are, you're saying you are, anyway. It's, it's Jamie Reeves. Jamie Reeves? Yeah. The driver, formerly known as John, is now claiming to be a Jamie. Whatever his real name is, he's going to be cuffed. Put your hands up in front of you, kid. 
Help me give me false details, mate. No, we're punch here. Hey. Jamie, help me give me false details, kid. I was panicking. Why? Because you're drunk, or? No, I'm not drunk, or? I've put your on, kid. The man doesn't smell of drink, but there's definitely a whiff of porky pie in the air. Tango 49, Della. Tango 49, Delta Crackheads. Yeah, 49. Just my veto check. Who did you say to come back to, please? As your missus took. Come back to Mr. Zach Reeves. Street What's your name? Mr. Jamie Reeves. Or oh, Zach. Jamie. He, Jamie or Zach. Zach. Zach, he disqual. Yeah. It seems this disqualified driver's bluffing is as bad as it's driving. Is that your missus just gone in there? I bet you'd have took off, wouldn't you, if they weren't in the car? Yeah. Wouldn't you? Yeah. There's your house, I would have pulled over as the last time, it's not working. Did you feel the stop last time, like? No, I could chase. Yeah, that's what I mean. Did you feel the stop yeah, last time? Yeah, I felt the stop. Shockingly, this driver was banned from the road just 10 days ago for dangerous driving. My record type is non-licensed holder, disqualified until 16th of October 2097. Two. 2097? It's a bit of a long one, isn't it? <laughs> He's disqual driver, no insurance on the car, so he's, he's getting locked up for that. We're just going to run him through a breath box. Blow into there. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Turn. No, 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 wait, wait. So if you feel it, you have to go on somewhere. Zero, yeah, you can have that fag, mate. Cheers, Dom. The suspect blows clear, but all this fibbing is thirsty work. Can you ask him to make me a drink of water, please? I want dry mouth. Can you get him a drink of water? A juice, please. It seems the suspect likes changing his drink choice as often as he does his own name. And Liam is still to be convinced. What's your real name? Is that? I don't believe you, me. Right, on my leg, lift my trouser leg up. However, Liam doesn't need to do any leg work as the suspect has helpful reminders of his name all over his body. Let's have a look at the tattoo on you now. Ah, right, yeah, I'll give you it then. It's the man's initials just in case he forgets his name again. Cheers, mate. As the car's going to be seized, the man and his girlfriend need to get their valuables out. Let's have a look. Oh. <laughs> one Direction. Is this yours? Hey, are you a 1D fan? No. Nah. It's your lasses? Yeah. Hey, that. Is he blowing me to the CD? Yeah. The One Direction this young lad is heading for is Middlesbrough Nick. Yeah, take the shoes now. Are them your shoes? No, but I'm not listening to the up again. And as well as the CD, his lady friend wants to take the trainers her fella's wearing. No. What's he going to wear on his feet? Anything with his socks. I'm not listening to the Yeah, like, you go like that? Yeah, yeah. So the lad's off to the Nick in just his socks. It's not been a great night for John. Sorry, Jamie. Oh, sorry, Zach. You know, that was probably one of the worst examples of false details I've ever had here. John Brown. Not that there's anything wrong with that name, but you know, it just didn't um, just didn't ring true to me. If someone's um, trying to think of a false name, you've got to pick one that uh, isn't like John Brown. You know, you could probably go for something like a uh, Paul Smith, <laughs> John Doe. And having spent most of the night giving a false name, the lad now seems keen to put the record straight. What's your kid up? Zach Reeves. You're a mate. Zach Reeves. Zach Reeves. Yeah. I said, watch your head. How do you think you say, what's your name? Yeah, ah, right, yeah. Even though Liam's confident the suspect is, in fact, Zach, there's one final check which will confirm his identity 100%. Zach's getting his fingerprints and DNA done. Um, be, it's a live scan, so, you know, compares his um, fingerprints against our national database. And if he's given false details and he's been known to us before, it'll ping up. Zach pleaded guilty to driving while disqualified and without insurance. He narrowly missed a custodial sentence and was banned for 16 months, given 100 hours community service and was fined £170. It wasn't all bad news, though. Liam did give him a pair of plimsolls, so he had something to wear on his walk home. Don't miss Jamie Theakston and the new series of Traffic Cops next Monday at 8. Next tonight, of all those lost at sea, some sailors live to tell their story of the Bermuda Triangle enigma, and we've got it. Or we'll pop over to Five Spike for clashes with cops, bouncers and security guards in new Fights Camera Action.
Police interceptors. The pride of the northeast. And scourge of the criminal class. Over the door now! Hand out! Hand out! We're up close and personal with Durham and Cleveland's crime fighting elite. In pursuit, off road, lethal list. And in the air. We've got a group of five runners, five runners, Nation Road now. With their crack firearms team. Oh, please! Out! And formidable dog unit. Stand still, please, do In the trenches. For the war on crime. Strap in. I am in pursuit. You're riding with the interceptors. They'll be filling the pumps. Stay there! We'll be filling the cells. Coming up. A dangerous high speed pursuit. Yeah, it's so lovely. Filmed by the suspects. Hoiks! A robbery at knife point. Now they've gone into a store, terrified young lady. They've taken the till with a knife. And Cleveland Police Emergency. An alarming 999 call. I mean, guess, bro. Yeah. There's a man who walked out with a shotgun. A shotgun? As pursuit specialists, Stop it now. interceptors see runaway vehicles from every angle. Speed is 9-0. I am in pursuit. Behind. Vehicles three tyres stung. Took the knee side, went to the offside. 1-0 miles per hour. Alongside. Simple, 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 simple. Even from below. But even they haven't seen a chase from inside the bad guy's car. Until today. It's lunchtime. And interceptor Louise Rex is chasing a Vauxhall Astra. Believe it's a stolen vehicle from the Harbertal area. While Louise keeps the Astra in sight as it boots it through the lunchtime traffic. Five miles away. The vehicle is the blue Vauxhall Astra. Interceptor Jimmy Greaves is racing to assist. Roger, what was its last sighting, please? Dog handler Jimmy's hoping he can get there in time to give his tracker dog Izzy a run out. Got our land shark in the back, Izzy. She's our little probationer, she's champing at the bit. She'd be more than happy to do a, a chase and detain for us if it was required. While our cameraman captures Jimmy's efforts to intercept, and fixed cameras on Louise's traffic car record the pursuit. Inside the Astra. Yeah, it's so lovely. Look at them! Points. The lads are making a film of their own. Get on, Dorby, son, go on! Crossroad, Horden, towards Blackhall. And they're stupid enough to post it on Facebook. No stopping, boys, no stopping. The Astra is flat out in treacherous conditions. Despite the soaking wet road, the driver's screaming along at more than 100 miles an hour and keeps his foot on the gas as they hammer into a town. The Astra's weaving in and out of the traffic at motorway speeds. Traffic is medium, road surface is wet. We're in a heavy residential area with pedestrians. Still, at more than twice the speed limit, the reckless driver is swerving all over the road, forcing oncoming cars to take evasive action. As the traffic thins out, the runaway driver boots it back up to 80 in a 30 zone. And he and his cohorts are celebrating their dangerous manoeuvres. Look at him, scruffy. Yes. Oh. Ah, pure scruffy little. Can't him catch up, scruffy. The Astra's now out of the town, but ramps up the risk levels by tearing up the tarmac at even more dangerously high speeds.
the runaway driver continues to show a complete lack of concern for other road users. Speeding through a red light on a stretch of road reduced to one lane due to roadworks. Thankfully, the drivers on the other side have heard the sirens and hang back, avoiding a potentially lethal collision. With the runaway driver being egged on by his mates Get at it, Dorby. Send it on, Dorby. and still unable to shift the pursuing cop car, the driver pulls his most dangerous move yet. <laughs> He slams it in reverse and bang! Rams Louise's patrol car, taking out one of its two cameras. He's off again, with Louise's limping traffic car in his rear view mirror. Look at him! Horrible! Horrible! Just been rammed off us. Scruffy. But control has heard enough. For safety reasons, Louise's pursuit is at an end. Yes, yes, understood. It looks as if this dangerous driver has got away. Get out, cause you up. Get out of here. Get out of it. But the cops are closing in. Cops are pursuing an Astra with three youths on board. No stopping, boys. No stopping. Who have filmed the chase from inside the Astra. Get out of it. Get out of that. Get on, Dorby, son. After ramming a traffic car, <laughs> control called off the pursuit. Look at them. Horrible. And they've made off. Get out, close view up. Get out of here. Get out of here. Cops are combing the area for the Astra, including dogman Jimmy Greaves. Unfortunately, due to the speeds and the manner of driving by the suspects, it's uh, been aborted by the inspector in the control room. We're just going to go to the area and see if it, it comes back towards where we are. Hopefully pick it back up. It hasn't passed me. All's quiet until a number plate recognition camera snaps the car. It's now headed back out of town. Frustratingly, on the same road that we came in, completely hoodwinked us and not gone to where we thought it would be, but that happens. Every available car in the area has been tasked with hunting down the Astra. The next closing in now, we've got pretty much every unit we've, we can muster together into one area. They'll know as well that they're running out of time. But before Jimmy or any of his colleagues can get hold of the car, it's been spotted by a member of the public. Ditched, binned and abandoned in a park. Izzy, here. Yeah. Good girl. It's now up to tracker dog Izzy to find a trail. Seacon. But it seems the driver and his mates have managed to evade the cops again. There's a number of various scents going on. The car's been there 15 minutes. It's a really popular dog walking spot. Um, and I suspect that, you know, there's been a few people gone past, so she's a little bit confused as to which track she, she's expected to follow. Um, there's no point in her chasing our tails. The good news is that a local community officer saw and ID'd one of the occupants of the car. The hunt to find them continues. And by early evening, that hunt is a whole lot more urgent. The suspect that was named was also wanted for a knife point robbery at a shop in Hartlepool area. We've just had another knife point robbery at uh, the same shop, and we believe it's the same suspect again. Evidence suggests that since this chase, the driver and one of his passengers may have held up a cashier at knife point. It's vital that they are taken off the streets. Now they've gone into a store, terrified a young lady just doing her job and robbed the store of a uh, quantity of cash, they've taken the till with a knife. So that kind of emphasises the importance of us getting behind and, and catching these people whenever we can. 
Jimmy arrives at the spa shop and joins his colleagues to review the in-store CCTV. It makes for harrowing viewing. Their faces hidden, two men enter the store. One approaches the counter and waves a knife at the terrified cashier, becoming increasingly violent before abandoning his victim and fleeing with the till. <laughs> the guy with the knife's not got no gloves on. Cops are confident that the man with the knife is the driver of the Astra. We've got a positive identification now. All they're going to do now is look for some intelligence and try and find out exactly where they are. They've got no gloves on. He's got his hands all around the till when he's come to take that off. Equally, the guy that's holding the door open for him, he had no gloves on either. Not the brightest criminals, to be fair, but that's no favour. Despite the potential forensic evidence, the trail remains cold. And as Jimmy hands over to the night shift, there have been no sightings. The suspects that are prepared to ram a cop and rob someone at knife point are still at large. A long night of intelligence gathering lies ahead. And the next morning, cops have tracked one of the suspects to an address in Horden. Interceptors Ross Good and Jess Metcalf are at the rear of the property. The response lines are in the front. They're going to give the door a knock around the front. We're just covering the back for the minute, so um, just in case anyone runs out, we can, uh, we can nab him. And then... Stay where you are. Jess has spotted him. Yeah, he's over the wall to the left. The suspect tries to escape through the backyards. He's in the back streets, he's garden hopping. He can try and run. But he's not come back over here. But he's got nowhere to hide. You might get the ladders, Ross. They know he's on the other side of the wall, so Jess breaks out the ladders. <laughs> Jess gets climbing and trains her taser. Right, you're going to do as you're told. Bruce, you've got one ladder on the roof. He wisely surrenders, meek as a lamb. The cops suspect this is one of the lads who filmed the car chase, but he's a lot less gobby on camera than he was behind it. Yeah, that is so look at this! Look at him! They also suspect he manned the door during the knife point robbery. Well, you never know. You'd be surprised how many people tell us that. And he's now got an appointment at the Nick. The lad arrested behind the wall was indeed the passenger in the car that rammed the cops. However, CPS decided there was not enough evidence against him with regards to the robbery and no further action was taken. Cops picked up the driver the same day. He pleaded guilty to possession of a knife and robbery at the spa. Charges in relation to the pursuit with the interceptors were dropped by the CPS. However, he did plead guilty to previous offences of dangerous driving, disqualified driving, drug driving and driving with no insurance. <laughs> Interceptor Liam Sewell is out on the graveyard shift when his skills are called into action. It's two o'clock in the morning now. Just on route, we're addressing Stockton to assist district officers. They've done a section 18 search at someone's address following them being arrested, and they found drugs paraphernalia and skills. The first record dog handler Liam ever bought was the Grandmaster Flash classic White Lines. And he's hoping sniffer dog Louie will find a few more this morning. So they've asked for me to attend with Drugs Dog Louie and he'll complete um, our thorough search of the house. We'll just make it really quick, you know, Louie will have a whiz round if there's any drugs in there, he'll indicate. While arresting a man for an assault charge, officers discovered small quantities of drugs in the house. They now need a sniffer dog to check if there's any more stashed away. Three in there. Well, that's what I wanted. Yeah. There's a dress going on in the car. Everything's super... Um, Drugs and scales and all sorts of yeah. things. The wanted man is in the back of a van. Three of his housemates are in the sitting room, so Liam and Louis' first port of call is the upstairs bedroom. Nothing between the sheets, but his attention is drawn to something in the bathroom. But it's a refreshing drink, 
rather than drugs. Shall we brush his teeth? Oh, will you? Come on then, Lou. Come on, crack on. Up. Negative up there, mate. Next is the kitchen, and Louis's nose is immediately twitching. His attention's drawn over here. He's trying to indicate on money, and he'll indicate something as little as a £5 note. It's only a small amount. There's a lot of people ask about their new notes. What he's indicating on that is the ink. New £5 note is the same ink that was used on the old £5 note. As well as the drug paraphernalia and the fiver, Louis's now indicating at the cupboard. Oh, it's interesting. Oh, good lad, Louie. Good lad, Louie. What have you found? Scatter cash. Look at that. Hey, you're earning money there. He's quitting, aren't you, son? Louis discovered a large amount of cash, but that's not all that's on the top shelf. In amongst all the money. So that is absolute solid cannabis resin. You know, yeah, it's a good result. A load of cash. Load of resin, just wads of wads of cash. Oh, there's even more money. No, I wish this was my kitchen. Here's your ball, son. You go play with that, eh? Hey? You go play with that. <laughs> it's a huge find. Hundreds, if not thousands, of pounds of cash and a sizable amount of cannabis resin or hash. Louis earned his treat tonight. I noticed Louis' behaviour change. He was going mental trying to get up there. And I thought it was just for the little cannabis grinders. But, you know, as soon as he's gone in there, he's ragged all the money all over. He's had a good time. I mean, yeah. He doesn't know what to settle on, does he? So I'm going to put all this money back where we found it at the top and the cannabis, and it'll all be forensically recovered. You know, Sock will come in and take some pictures of it in situ. While scenes of crime and other officers take over, Liam and Louis search the rest of the property. Find us. Find us, Louis. Find us. Louis, here, pups. This. Will come up empty. So he's working hard in and around the set eight. So I'd say that's like an area of interest, but we'll tell the lads to be doing a bit of a fingertip search. He hasn't really left here and gone over there yet. But Liam's convinced there's more to this house than meets the eye. At the moment, you know, we've only got some cannabis resin and a load of cash. I think there's a bit too much cash there to be had for just a, a street dealer in cannabis resin. I think there's going to be some class A drugs here. With the suspects off to the cells, PC Michael Wilson and the rest of the team will now do a fingertip search of the house while Liam heads back out on patrol. By the time his shift ends, Michael and his team are also back at the Nick with some extremely significant finds. So where'd you get this, eh, Mick? This is up in the, uh, the loft, as you can see, is several kilos. The bags are full of smaller bags of brown powder, which they think is heroin. I'd say about four kilos. How much is it a kilo? If that, well, that being blocks, it's like import, so you're looking at least 100k a kilo, street like street level eagles. That's a good amount then, isn't it? The suspected street value for the heroin could be up to £400,000. After leaving left, he had done a search of the, all the kitchen cupboards and everywhere else he'd look, and found in the sugar that quantity of white powder. Searching the address, we found pepper spray near the loft hatch. The loft hatch looked like it had been opened recently. So again, went up in there, people often hide stuff up there. Did see as you go in the loft hatch. Was there the carry bags full of drugs? We suspect this to be heroin, obviously class A controlled drug. Given the state of it that we've been, you can see there it's like very solid. If that suggests it's straight from import, which means it's probably quite pure. I think hence the high street value of it. Everyone arrested came quietly, and given what they found, it's a big relief. Big massive machete. You know, these boys aren't messing about. The lads have piled in that house tonight, smashed the door in, and there's weapons like this. Look enough, they haven't been threatened with them, but this is the type of stuff that we're faced with. We've got our pepper spray and our batons and our little stab vests. They're probably no match for that big machete. With hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of suspected heroin and cannabis seized along with large sums of money and weapons, it's been a fantastic result for the team. This is why we do it. It's obviously taking that off the streets, heroin, things like that, they run people's lives, families and everything. And that's why people commit crime. People go out committing crime to fund the drug habit. You're taking the drugs off the streets. You're obviously preventing people from um, getting the drugs and harming people. The main suspect was arrested for assault, possession of an offensive weapon, and possession of drugs with intent to supply. The other three people were arrested for possession of drugs with intent to supply. All four are currently under investigation. Coming up, an alleged gunman on the loose. 
officers would need to protect themselves and the person from someone in possession of a potentially lethal weapon. A suspect kicks off. No. <laughs> so when you... Oh, and Lee Wilson catches a drugged up driver. Roll it in a joint, get high, and become a danger to road you when you drive. To death waiting to happen. It's just after pub closing time, and the Cleveland control room has received an alarming call. Hello, Cleveland Police Emergency. Hi, um, I'm in Gisborough. Yeah. There's a man who walks out with a shotgun. A shotgun? He's got this man go kill every single person I see. What he does he look there. like? Give me a description of him. He's got glasses, he's white, black hair. He's got black hoodie. Yeah. And then he's got like a red jumper underneath with a blue jumper. Is it busy on the on Westgate at the minute or not? It's really busy. There's a lot of cars busy. about, a lot of people about. a lot of people walking around. Yeah, a lot of people. A suspected armed man on the streets is a serious situation. Every available firearms officer in the area has been dispatched, and part of the team is dog handler Liam Sewell. Officers would need to protect themselves and the persons from someone in possession of a potentially lethal weapon. Time is at 12 past 11, and I'm grabbing firearms authority. Unarmed officers have been instructed not to approach the area of that flood and have medium risk. We're responders, part of the firearms team. It's a quite a serious job, you know, it's just gone 11 o'clock, there'll be a lot of people coming out the pubs very shortly. So we don't know what the lads' beef is, but we've got CCTV having a look. Firearms unit are heading to the scene and we'll liaise with them, we'll go in and do a search for the mill. Liam will provide backup to the firearms team and his Belgian shepherd, Titan, will be on the front line. Don't get the compliance of the subject, then Titan will be sent out front of the team to detain the mill with a shotgun. Won't be an easy decision to be made, but if the lad's got a gun, he's, he, we're going to have to, you know, detain him and take him down. After a quick stop to get kitted up, Liam joins the rest of the firearms team as they head into the town centre. We'd be on two ARVs now, and they're moving in on the potential subject who's been seen on CCTV. CCTV operators have spotted the alleged gunman who's standing outside a busy pub. The male is wearing a black jacket with a red hoodie underneath. This is that description. Doesn't appear to have anything with him that we can see in his hands. He's in conversation with various people outside the telecom. So we're just about to land on there. The problem is the pubs are kicking out. The male that we believe responsible is in conversation with a couple of people outside the pub. It's a bit of a nightmare job. As the police cars pull up outside... This is it now, that's in there. The suspect disappears inside. <laughs> the firearms team don't want to scare people by going in mob handed, so instead surround the pub. 49, is it order for me to go and cover the rear of the pub? Yes, sir. Watch out, run round. <laughs> Liam heads to the rear of the pub and spots a man waving at him. Hold him there, officer. Is he? Right. Hold him Does anyone come out the back? No, not yet. What do you look like? He's got a black jacket on, glasses and a red hoodie. He was talking to the door staff out the front and walked in. It's not all right? Yeah. I won't have a look. So, walk him out the front. 49. The doorman just said he's in the side of the pub. Do you want him to walk him out the front? Is he in the back garden now? Yeah. 49, he's come out into the back beer garden with the doorman now. Can you let us in? Oh, let me in then. Point nine there. He's opened the gear for us. Tight, steady. Hey, stand still, mate. Put your hands up, kid. Walk to me. Point nine, I've got the mill at the back of the pub. Put your hands on the can, do not move. It's the suspect from the CCTV, and he doesn't appear to be armed. I'm all right. Good man. Just keep your hands on there for us, all right? Is you at risk of getting bit of you, mate, any sudden movements? Do you understand? Yeah. Good man. As he's alone with Titan, Liam can't make the arrest, but his firearms colleagues are soon on scene. Good Drop me, drop, drop that on the floor, drop that on the floor. Can I put on there? No, just drop it on the floor. Just listen to him, mate. Walk round here, bud. Walk round here, bud. Keep your hands there. It's an alley you shouldn't have. No, I've got nothing, mate. You've got any police tonight, too? 
The man isn't carrying anything that could be classed as a weapon. Officers now suspect that the 999 call may have been a hoax. Have you rang the police tonight? No, I lost my phone at Ball Street early on. Did you? Then I found it, and then it was near enough dead, so I just turned it off. That was it. And they suspect he made the call. What time did you lose your phone? Between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. How much you drink? The man isn't fussed about being cuffed, but more interested in the officer's weapon. Is that a real gun? Hmm? Is it? AK-47, no. <laughs> I, uh, I think... You can... Think you're out, mate? Baghdad? Yeah. Oh. No, I love guns. I had, uh, Do you? I had a 2 2 air rifle. I love them. Officers have now checked the number of the phone that made the 999 call, and it's registered to this man, so he's off down the nick. Right, mate, it's 23, 35 hours. You're under arrest and sp okay. suspicion of making uh, malicious communications to the police, OK? Purporting that you've got a firearm in Gisborne Town Centre. Pop that away, mate. So you don't have to say anything, but may I have a defence? Don't mention one question, so much you like relying on court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand that? Yeah. Sorry from the language of this. Well... Firearms. Really look like I've got firearms on me. Get helicopters out wherever you want. Well, that's not why you're being locked up. It's for falsely calling the police and reporting to have a firearm. Well, we've sat out a man a minute, won't we? Tomorrow, I need to be at home. I need to be seeing this mum and dad. I'm doing a f one. Piss tear. Absolute piss tear. When we're going in this? No, no, no. We're just waiting for a van to come oh, for you. We're waiting for a van now, eh? Can't go to the fox to see my dad. No, mate. No? Mum, we've got Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough, mate. I've got no money to get home. Yeah, well, we'll sort that out, won't we? The man's mood has drastically changed. Sorry. I'm up for sleep tonight. How are you supposed to sleep yeah, tonight? I'm sleep I don't tonight. know. In, in the cell, I'm presuming, mate. Well, I need quilt and yeah, anything. That's my always in the oh, we'll, cell. We'll make, mate, we'll try and make sure you're comfy. Last time I was in there, I didn't have any food, no drink, nothing. Mm. Eh? Huh? Well, it's not a hotel, is it? Well, I hear people going around in the morning giving them food and everything. Mm. And... Move! <laughs> Is that one yet? What are you doing? Don't go on. Huh? Settle down. No. Oh. Huh? You're not going home, mate. I am going home. Stab you all. You're stab us all, will you? Hey, I suggest you don't make your silly threats, eh? Don't go on. No! Just relax yourself, mate. No, I don't want to relax. I want to go on. There's enough to go Oh, pricks. Every single one of you. Pricks. I want you to go on. In a nice bed. My last one. Oh. Are you relaxing now, kid? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, buddy. You're sorry. Shall I sit you up then? Yeah, I'm You'll get one more chance, mate. If you kick off again, you'll be lied on there, all right, until the van comes. And sit him up there. Right. Come on, then, mate. Sit up. Don't stand up, though. You can stay sat down. Tell you where I'll put you, mate. Put you on there, eh? That'll do you, Warner. Yeah, we'll get your glasses, mate. Just as quickly as he blew up, the man has calmed down again. I'm gonna get you down in the back of the van, take you down to Middlesbrough Custody, all right? Well, we'll sort... Mate, that's a lacy worries. Come on, jump up, kid. We'll sort you out with a lift up, no matter. All right, pal. Thankfully, the suspect remains calm and he's now on his way to Middlesbrough, Nick. Help yourself in, fella. Watch your head on the way, mate, because you're a big fella, aren't you? Oh, man. Six foot, what? Right. Cheers, lad. I'll follow you down, all right? All right. Good result from the start. There's no one with a shotgun. We believe it's this lad. He's made some phone calls, but he's been getting done for malicious communications. Wasting police time, basically. You know, we've all deployed to this quite serious incident outside of a public house with guns, you know, kicking out time. So, yeah, it saves him, right? Get him locked up and hopefully he'll get a hefty fine at court. So far, so good. But as he drives back to Middlesbrough, Liam spots the police van stopped on the hard shoulder. What's the matter? He's, not, he's unresponsive. He's on a pulse, but he's just he's not responding. Did he take anything? I don't know, mate. He has had a bank of the head, obviously, when yeah. he's been arrested, we've ended up on the floor. Yeah, yeah. But... He, he, he was sat in the corner, Shane, trying to communicate with him, wouldn't mm. have it. And look where we are yeah. now. Carl! 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 Can you hear me? The man's not responding, but given his vital signs, they can't be sure if he's playing up or not. Is, is there anything there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, 
How was his eyes? He's quite responsive. His eyes are massive, aren't they, the pale balls? Ah, they're changing to the light then. Very unresponsive in there. The lad's a bit concerned for him. So we don't know if he's took anything, you know, if that bump in the head when he's gone on the floor has caused him any injuries. But we're just going to give him some medical attention. Chances are now he's going to go to the hospital, be checked over then. Minutes later, a paramedic arrives. Carl, got messing about. Come on, wakey wakey. He's not convinced that anything's wrong. People that are unconscious and all the rest of it don't flicker their eyes. Come on, wakey wakey. Oh, he's opened his eyes, there we go. And he's back in the land of the living. Yeah, the paramedics just arrived, and as soon as he's touched him, he sort of came to life. Bit of a miracle, really. So if we'll be able to get him, his final checks done and run him down to the custody and get him booked in. Back at the Nick, the man's changed from being unconscious to being a little bit cheeky. Can I have a cup of tea before I go in the cell, because I'm really thirsty? Oh, I'll be sugars. Do you have any cup of tea, then? Tea. I'll make sure you get one before you go in there. Yeah, a bacon sandwich. A bacon sandwich? Yeah, it's uh, five one in the morning. man spent a snack-free night in the cells before being released the next day. He was convicted of wasting police time by making a malicious phone call and was given a community order and fined £285, including costs. Liam hopes that the evening's events have taught him a lesson. It's not fun and games. It could have been life or death. He's reported being in possession of a shotgun in the street and then uh, the firearms lads have deployed, so he could have been staying down the end of a battle there. Lucky enough on this occasion, we've got him for malicious communications and it appears to be that's all it is. So it could have been a lot different. If there's one thing that the interceptors are always on the lookout for, it's motors that have seen better days. These can often be the car of choice for criminals. I think the reason that we stop sort of the older vehicles, the more sort of knackered ones, is because that's what criminals tend to use. Thank you. Oh, look. No insurance, insecure battery, no rear wiper. Likely to get him back. Nil. You can see them and they just stand out like a sore thumb. Have you got any insurance? No. Have you got a driving license? No. It's not against the law to have a, an old tired looking car, but I would say seven times out of ten, there's a problem with them, like they haven't got insurance, they haven't got licences, or they've, they've been up to no good, so that's why we do stop them. It's early afternoon, and interceptor Lee Wilson is out on patrol when he spots a scruffy-looking white van with a faulty brake light. LZLZ from Tango 422 Quebec, over. It was for a moving vehicle check. Thank you, 1921 Martin Road. It should be a white Astra van. It comes back clean and being owned by a woman, but there's a man behind the wheel, so Lee decides to pull him over. I just have a about his brake light, and you're probably not aware of it. Check his driving licence status, make sure he is who he's supposed to be. And go from there. Oh, young fella, you all right? Yeah, good, good. Lee's immediately hit with a wave of pungent perfume. What? Oh, you been smoking cannabis? No, no. You just had a cigarette in your hand there. Was that cannabis you were smoking? Just be straight up front with us. No, it's not, no. No. Right, turn around, look at me. Right, your pupils are really, really small. All right, you had in your hand there when you were, when you were in the driving seat, OK, driving along, you had what looked like a cannabis joint. All right. right. Have you just been smoking a joint? Just be straight no, up front. I haven't. Right. Have you had any cannabis today? Earlier on, yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Because you just think cannabis, fella. Right. Is there any cannabis in the car? I'm going to search under Section 23 of the Misuse of Drugs Act. The grounds are because I can smell cannabis in the car. You're looking forward towards a tin there, a tub, which I suspect has got cannabis in. It's Is there cannabis in there? Little tiny bit. All right. So after being pulled over for a dodgy light, the driver finally fesses up to smoking cannabis and to possession. Not a bad little pull. Stinks of cannabis, and sure enough, there's a cannabis bud, and that's the grinder. So you put it in there, you grind it up, very similar to that tobacco, roll it in a joint, smoke it, get high, and become a danger to road users when he drives. Now it's time for the van driver to take a drugs wipe. Right, oh, put your tongue in, you need to do your cheeks. Thank you. 
Drug wipes take up to eight minutes to give a result, and Lee uses the time to give the driver a piece of his mind. You've got to understand the severity of driving while some fit or under the influence of drugs. You're out traffic travelling up and down here, it's one of the busiest roads in, in Middlesbrough. And you're travelling past the school, kids are getting picked up. Could you ever live with yourself if you happen to have, you know, knocked a child over going up here or caused an accident, caused an injury to yourself or somebody else? You'll have a family that cares about you, I have no doubt about that. Think of the look on your family's face if you happen to have a crash as a result of your drug driving. However, Lee's lecture is cut short by a positive result. Four minutes in, we're halfway through and it's indicating already for cannabis. Yeah. All right. So that's just to me that you've had some, some recently. As the wipe suggests, the man has smoked cannabis. He'll be given a blood test back at the nick. Drugged up drivers were involved in more than 300 fatal or serious crashes last year. And Lee's delighted to get another one off the road. Drug driving is no different to drink driving. How's he going to focus on his driving? He kills somebody. Somebody's life's destroyed and the whole family goes through absolute turmoil as a result of £10 worth of cannabis. And I'm really glad that a single brake light on a vehicle has indicated for me to stop this vehicle and go and have a chat with him. Um, it's, a, it's a death waiting to happen and it disgusts me. Back at the Nick, the man was booked in and given a blood test, which came back positive for cannabis. He was later convicted of possessing cannabis and driving under the influence of drugs. He was fined £355, including costs, and banned from driving for 12 months. Still to come... LA, I am now in pursuit. Step back to directions. Spike's hunt for a stolen motor. We had a two-in-one burglary last night. Someone's broken into a house, nicked the car case, and then nicked the car. Leads him to call in the canine cavalry. Someone actually stops the car, gets out and runs. I might not actually catch them, but my best hairy friend here, he's going to catch anybody. With cars more secure than ever, the days of hot wiring then nicking a motor are long gone. The story Norton Road, heading towards the town. Nowadays, car thieves break into houses, take the keys and steal the motor. This is known as a two-in-one burglary. The criminals out there who break into houses in order to steal the keys for the cars, and it's happened more than ever now. With these two-in-one burglaries, they don't necessarily come in to burgle your house. They see a car on the drive. They're not always selective of what car they want, it's just a car. They'll use that car on false plates the majority of the times in order to commit their crime. It's a sunny afternoon in County Durham and Interceptor Spike is on the lookout for a stolen Vauxhall, which has just activated an automatic number plate recognition camera. That stolen car has now been sighted on one of our number plate readers, so we're now making a search for that. Spike's reason for joining the police 20 years ago was to catch car thieves, and he's confident he can add another one to his long list of lockups. We've had a spate of two-in-one burglaries at the moment, and there's a little team that's out of control. I strongly suspect that it'll be the same team. The next closing on them now. We've got all traffic assets in this area, almost like a ring of steel. We're going to do our best now to, to get hold of whoever's in this car. Spike's single crewed, but he's going to pick up two colleagues to help him track down and, most importantly, catch the villains. They're all young, skinny lads, probably wearing tracksuits, and they can probably outrun me. Because of that, we've also got a tactic that we then use to combat these. We combine a traffic car and a dog car in one, and we become a, a formidable team. Spikes joined by dog handler Ian Squires and his German shepherd Kaiser. Not the most conventional combination, but one with a proven track record. This is a tactic we've used uh, quite a few times now. You might have someone in a fast car who might make off from the police. Whatever fast car they're in, we will catch. Um, but it's then when push comes to shove, if someone actually stops the car, gets out and runs, I might not actually catch them. I'll give them a damn good go. Um, but my best hairy friend here, he's going to catch anybody. Suppose yeah. Usain Bolt went a bit mad, jumped into a Nick car, drove <laughs> it. Um, he's he's going to catch them. 
You know, he's going to catch them within the first 20 yards. Yeah. But there is one downside to this otherwise winning combo. Not every traffic lad will do this, though, because, no, no. because both you and him stink. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just because I'm a bit smelly <laughs> and I'll, I, I don't mind putting up with it. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks the same about you. And no, no one else is big enough to tell him that he stinks. <laughs> Isn't that right? The Dream Team aren't having any luck sniffing out the stolen motor. However, less than a mile away, their colleague AJ is trying the back roads when the stolen car appears right in front of them. The Astra stops and the front seat passenger gets out. As AJ's on his own, he stays behind the wheel and sticks with the car and driver, while Spike and Squizy race to the scene. Where's AJ on the map? While the passenger saunters off, AJ tries to block the car in. Delay contact been made. But the compact car manages to squeeze past him and speeds off. LA, I am now in pursuit. Stand by for directions. Sandwich Terrace. The Vauxhall takes two quick rides into an alley behind some houses. Stand by, stand by, back roads. Travelling in the drain of of Peatley Cottages. The vehicle has collided. Stand by. <laughs> Spike and Squiresy are now right behind. It was. They're running, they're running, they're running. Where? But AJ's already got the driver. Straight through, Squiresy, straight. Squiresy, straight through and ahead. Straight through, down there, down there, down there. They think there's another runner. Where's the other head? Any more? Any more? Spike, I'm, I'm with them. Run in that. Go over the wall. That's it. He said no. No more. There was one in the allotment. Good lad. The front seat passenger is long gone, but they've got the man behind the wheel. Nice job. Less than two minutes after AJ first saw the stolen car, they've got its driver nicked and in cuffs. Mint. Mint. That, AJ, is mint. That is not mint. Even though Kaiser didn't get to go for a run out, with the stolen car recovered, although a bit worse for wear, and the driver locked up, it's been a good result all round. Mate, have you had out a drink in the last 20 minutes? Just take a normal breath and then just blow in there, buddy. As AJ was involved in a collision with another car, he has to be breath tested. Do some photos, your result is zero. And the, the, world, the world can now breathe a sigh of relief. And he's happy with his afternoon's work. I've been searching the area for a stolen vehicle, knowing that sometimes they take the cars around the back of the allotments, and this vehicle's sort of been head on to us. He tried to reverse, so I closed him down. Then there's a bit of contact in front of our vehicle. LA, contact's been made. He managed to get past me. We've only come a couple of streets and he's crashed the car. Vehicle has collided, stop by. He thought there was a side alley down the side of the house that wasn't. He's just given up. The driver was later convicted of driving whilst disqualified, failure to stop for police, and driving without due care and attention. He was given a 12 month community order with 200 hours unpaid work and was ordered to pay an £85 victim surcharge, £135 costs and was disqualified from driving for six months. No further action was taken in regards to the car theft. The first time I've driven a traffic car in a chase, it went better than expected, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Call the car. Top job, top job. Make the intercept route of you, yeah? The police interceptors are back new next Monday at 8. It's a battle against Mother Nature for engineers tonight. Paddington Station 24-7 continues new next. And tomorrow, take a tour behind the scenes of a British icon here on Channel 5 as we go inside the Tower of London, new at 9.15. Police interceptors out in force in one of Britain's highest crime areas. He's lost it. He's got crash, crash, crash. Get him, quick, get him. We're on patrol. It will kill us. 
with West Yorkshire's finest. Hang on, you better hold the guy, get it. Behind the wheel. Still continuing, uh, but it's wrong side. Armed and ready. And poised to pounce. <laughs> Taking down the villains. Palms behind your back. Who put lives at risk. <laughs> stop, stop. In the war against crime, <laughs> the interceptors are battling. Get down. On the front line. It's dangerous. There's no two ways about it. Coming up. Andy rams a runaway. <laughs> a drink driver refuses to come quietly. Get out of the car! No! Get out of the car! No! Get out of the car! And it's raining eggs and rocks. Yeah. Oh. See, now we're getting a bit naughty. It's 4am on the night shift, and interceptors Andy Howarth and Bob Hoyle are heading back out on patrol. Andy describes the best thing about working in West Yorkshire is that all roads lead to Bradford, as it's the busiest place in the world. And within minutes, news comes in of a pursuit a few miles away. Andy races to intercept. A blue VW has failed to stop after running a red light. Look here, uh, speedy, 70 miles an hour. We've got the on the road, really. Thankfully, the streets are quiet, but the VW takes more risks, driving at speed on the wrong side of the road and running more red lights. Yeah, five forest an hour, a right, right, right. Onto Leeds Road, Leeds Road, still six zero miles an hour. Now the suspects throw something out of the car. It looks like a set of mole grips, commonly used in burglaries. But are they trying to discard evidence or trying to damage the police car? Either way, the interceptors aren't going to let the suspects out of their sights. It's just here to right. And he is only moments away and closing in on the chase. It's time to try to bring this pursuit to an end. There. Oh, oh yes, we're going to do it. Stop, stop, stop. And he smashed into the rear of the VW, but it's not enough to take it out. Other well, interceptors arrive and try to block the VW's escape route. <laughs> the getaway driver somehow manages to squeeze past and make off. It was a stop, stop, stop. He's back up and running. But the interceptors are still hot on his heels. Go, 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 go. The VW ups the ante and once again takes to the wrong side of the road. Bradford Road over Bradford Road. The back towards Clack Eaton over. The pursuing police car remains on the correct side, keeping pace, but the VW dives down a small side street. No, no, no. The interceptors are forced to wait till they can spin their car around. Yeah, he's got the wrong side of the central reservation, and he's doing a right, right, right. Just give it a sec. This one. Yeah, he's on Ru Reuben Street. He's gone up to Reuben Street over. Keep going, Bob. Keep going. The car's empty and the occupants have done a runner. Yeah, the vehicle's abandoned Reuben Street over. But the interceptors don't give up that easily. Boy, far chasing on foot. The suspect has had a head start, but this officer has a nose for sniffing out wrong uns. And he spots someone lurking in the bushes. I'll chase you. 
on the floor now. Face down. With 50,000 volts aimed directly at him, the suspect knows the game's up, and it's the collar they wanted. By far, I've got the driver. Right, arms behind your back. <laughs> Other interceptors arrive to assist with the arrest. Right, have you got anything on you that you shouldn't have? No. Have you got anything sharp, anything that's going to hurt you or anything that's going to hurt no. us? Right, I'm going to put handcuffs on you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to be so sorry I'm going to come back into this channel. Right, mate, you're under arrest and suspicion of dangerous driving at this moment in time. The suspect claims ignorance, but this interceptor never forgets a face. With the suspect driver in cuffs and the passenger also locked up, back at the crash scene, Andy reflects on the morning's events. Yeah, it were coming towards us um, and we were so close, it were going to make him go and do something silly. So I just put my vehicle in position where we could try and slow him down. We've come, had a coming together. Tactical contact, it's called, for stopping him. Uh, didn't quite work as we'd have hoped because it have stopped him first time, but uh, we managed to slow the vehicle, so that reduces the risk to everybody then. But I ain't caught him up front, I've caught him on side. All uh, right. And that's why I wear damage. Well, he ain't gone far, because it's abandoned over there, isn't it? So yeah. um, disabled it. To a certain degree. Back with the abandoned car, it becomes clear why the suspects were so keen to avoid capture. In the vehicle, there's what looks like a face covering uh, and a baseball cap, and there's some uh, some tools and there's some for some reason some rocks. I don't know if it's just from whether they've picked them up or if they're going to throw them through some patio windows somewhere. The balaclava has been located and, uh, and some mole grips as well. It's. The result at the end of the day, it's, there's at least two people off the road. They're not out there breaking into people's houses this evening. So we've, we've potentially uh, prevented some crime happening. The driver has been charged with dangerous driving and is under investigation for aggravated taking a vehicle without consent and conspiracy to commit burglary. The passenger is also under investigation for conspiracy to commit burglary. Still to come, Get out of the car. No. an unruly drunk gets parva sprayed. Chris Basto pulls over a death trap on wheels. If you hit a pedestrian with that, it's going to slice me in half. And a pursuit in Leeds turns into a manhunt. It's the late shift, and interceptor Steve Oliver and rookie Aaron Stoney are on the lookout for dodgy drivers. Steve's been on the force since the year 2000. Being a family liaison officer and road death investigator has no time for one particular type of driver. People who drive under the influence drink drugs. It, it, they are just the most selfish people you'll find. Um, they drive on the road and put everybody else at danger, um, you know, not just themselves. Um, and it is a complete disregard for the law and disregard for anybody else's safety uh, as well as their own. Uh, and there's absolutely no excuse for it in my eyes. A man in a van driving aggressively and tailgating has aroused Steve's suspicion. He decides to pull the driver over. Aaron exits and invites the suspect for a chat. Good, Paul. Not bad, mate. How are you? Too bad. Why do you think I've stopped you then, mate? Oh, Have you had a drink tonight? Yeah, I've had a pint, yeah. Right. The man says he's only had a pint, but it's time to put that claim to the test. What I'm going to do now is just uh, breathalyse you, because yeah. I can smell intoxicants on your breath. Fresh tube. Pop that in the top there. Deep breath from you, mate. Form a seal around that end of the tube and blow steadily until I tell you to stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. There we go. Thank you. Okay, you've provided a positive roadside breath sample, sir. Legal limits 35. You've provided a sample of 92 at the roadside. So you're currently under arrest on suspicion of uh, drink driving. The man is almost three times over the drink driving limit and now facing a ban. Going to go and tell his passengers to uh, walk home or uh, 
if one of them can drive it, check them out for a license and insurance. While Aaron breaks the news to the van's passengers, the suspect takes a sudden dislike to our cameraman. Not getting here, is it? Yeah, we sat next to you. Well, why is he going to be sat next to me? Because he's in my car, he's coming out with me. Well, I don't want him next to me. After initially appearing calm, the alcohol is beginning to do the talking. Do me a favour, don't have him sat next to me, yeah? Where else are you going to sit, mate? And now he's making threats. Well, my mate can let him sit there, let him sit there, right, and see what happens then. Stick your hands up front for me, please, sir. I don't want to sit my hands in front. Stick your hands up front for me, sir. No, it's not good. The man now refuses to be cuffed, and his bravado soon turns ugly. I don't stop. Here. Oh, my God. Yeah, really? Get out of the car. No, get out of the car. No, get out of the car. Extra Romeo 3 1. We've got other units in the Get area, please. Road near M Lane. Why are you making this difficult, Prof? Why are you making this difficult? Tell you know me. Get out of the car. Tell you know me. Get out of the car. The work won't work. Because I told you to get out of the car. You're not right. getting out. Get out of the car. Get out of the car now. Get out of the car. No. They give him one last chance to put the cuffs on. And sit front, please. Sit front. Sit front. Uh, done, innit? it? No. no. But he's not budging and becoming increasingly belligerent. The interceptors need to take back control before the situation escalates further. So Steve pulls out his parva spray. Uh, uh, you're in. I'm in. Pound. Top, eh? And step front right. me, sir. Steve has no option but to spray the suspect. What you saying against the gas, mate? The man seemed more concerned about his designer top than being sprayed. But as Aaron steps to one side, Steve unleashes the parva. It's similar to pepper spray, causing temporary pain in the eyes. It's had the desired effect. The man yields and is cuffed. Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you just come out first place? No, mate, you've just got me tougher than you. It's really worked out. The suspect is sat on the pavement to recover from the effects of the parva spray. Lay him down on his side. Get inside. Stay there. Got out first time. That wouldn't have happened, would it? Yeah, we've managed to uh, get the gentleman out of the vehicle. Uh, he has been parvered. Uh, if we just request a, uh, a van, please, for transport. The parver spray is partly used due to the quick recovery time, and this man should be fine in 15 to 20 minutes. How are we doing, mate? You all right? Although the effects from the booze, both on his head and driving licence, might take a little longer. What do we think about sitting the gentleman up? Yeah, do I sit up? Yeah. Come on, mate. Come on. One, two, three. There we go, sir. Keep your legs out in front of you. That's it. Makes it easier for you. The man's ride to the nick arrives. Here we go, sir. We'll wait for the van to pull up. Up in the cage and we'll stick you in the back. One, two, three. Up we go. That's it. Walk to the back of the van for me, sir. Up you go, sir. Have a seat down to your left. You can yeah, you can my T-shirt, yeah? It's not the parva making the man cry now. It's his ripped favourite T-shirt. Steve has no sympathy. The thing that drew our attention to him in the first place was his manner of driving, being uh, ridiculously close to the vehicle in front and accelerating hard up to get to the vehicle in front. Um, it is that sort of driving that, that causes collisions, causes uh, injury uh, and potentially causes death. Uh, and we have five deaths a day uh, on Britain's roads. We don't have five murders a day, um, so why are we happy to accept five deaths a day? Uh, it's beyond me. The man blew 68 down at the station, almost twice the legal limit. He pleaded guilty to drink driving and received a £120 fine, a £30 victim surcharge, £85 costs, and was disqualified from driving for 20 months. Part of the interceptor's job is passing on their knowledge to new recruits. And learning the ropes is Dan Ledgeway. I'm looking to get into traffic and therefore I've come on a four-day attachment, try and get more of an insight as to what the department does, etc. Dan's guide to policing the streets is Chris Basto. First job of the shift is assisting another unit with a dodgy-looking merc. Yep, happy with that. 
the lads arrive and new boy Dan takes the lead. And um, I'll check car as well. Now then, fella, how are we doing? Do you want to just turn engine off for us and just jump out of the car? Just going to take hold of you whilst we take you to the car. Have you got driver licence and stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah. all insured? Yeah, oh, lovely. We'll get you in here because there's too many people stood out looking, so... And while Dan chats to the driver... What I'm going to do is I'm going to caution you, OK, so you don't have to say anything. Chris checks over the motor. It's a disaster on wheels. As Faz told you. Well, he said we've got quite a few things. Yeah, dangerous part because of the substantial damage to the near side. It's sticking out, it's sharp, it's protruding as it should do. Uh, it's displaying white lights at rear. It's got a defective front offside tyre because there's an egg-shaped bulge in it and the number plates don't conform with regulations neither. Yep. Um, I think that's it. No more tea. But it is taxed. But taking to the roads in an accident waiting to happen is taxing Chris's patience. How come you're driving around in that, sir? I'm going to put it on side here now. I'm going to repair it on side. Yeah, but you shouldn't, you shouldn't be driving it around like that. That If you hit a pedestrian with that, it's going to slice them in half. It's not looking great for the driver. You're going to get at least three points. It's probably a, a death trap on the road. If it had collided with the pedestrian or that bulge had popped, it could have had quite a nasty accident. It's dangerous. And this mangled motor needs to be taken off the road. What I'm going to advise you to do is to park it up on a side street, leave it there. The next time that car gets driven, we'll be on the back of a recovery truck when you're going to get it fixed. If you got caught driving that again and you were to go to court, you'd be likely looking at disqualification because you're going to end up totting up that many points. Um, so what are you going to do with that car? I'm going to leave it here. Right, lovely. That's what I wanted to hear. The man claims he will get the vehicle recovered, but also says he lives just round the corner. It doesn't matter how far you live, don't drive home in it. Yeah, a minute away. It doesn't matter whether it's a minute or five minutes or ten minutes away, don't drive that car. They escort the driver to a parking spot to await recovery, and Dan has some parting words of advice. Don't, don't run the risk of doing it again. If we see you driving, we will be stopping you. All right, take the advice. Right. Cheers. But will the man's short trip home prove too enticing? So we'll see. We'll see if we see it again in 10, 15 minutes. There's no time to rest, as they're called to assist the pursuit in the northern area of Leeds. An undercover unit has been tailing a black Range Rover, whose passengers have been acting suspiciously. It looks like the driver has clocked the unmarked cop car and boots it. It's a dead end and a decamp. The driver legs it while the passenger gives himself up. It's now a manhunt for the driver. Chris and Dan arrive on scene. Does he run round here then? I come through there and I've lost him, I've got through there. Yeah. If he's come this way, he could either be to ground behind bushes. As they prepare for a search, there's some rustling from behind some bins. It's the driver. Unfortunately for him, he's chosen a rubbish hiding place. And now he's in cuffs. Rookie cop Dan once again takes the lead. How old are you, mate? Not speaking to you. Right, mate, when was the last time you had a drink? You had a drink in the last 20 minutes? 
It's cold, yeah. I'm not speaking to you. You're not speaking to us. That's it, present. What are we going to do, mate? Yeah. We're going to request a sample of breath from you, okay? We're going to warn you that failure to provide, refusal to provide, and providing a positive sample are all arrestable offences. Right. What I want you to do, seal your lips around there, take a deep breath, and empty your lungs into the tube. The man refuses to blow. Again, mate, I'll warn you once more. I solicit and explain everything. Once more, failure to provide to an officer yeah. who has requested it solicitor, following a moving road traffic offence is an everything. offence which you may be arrested for. Listen. Last opportunity listen, to provide me with a listen, sample listen of breath. To me, listen to me. My solicitor will speak to you. Right. Regarding... Your solicitor cannot provide me with a sample my of breath, though. My solicitor will speak to you. Dan. Right. I'd take that as a fail to provide. Yeah. You've speak asked to him. my solicitor. You've right. been polite. You've asked refusal several to times. Take the test, then. No, it's not. It's been a tricky encounter. But Dan has handled it well. And now the uncooperative suspect starts on the verbals. Take me to the police. Then. It's not a game, pal. Take me, Ethan, do you think I'd up. No. What? It's not a game. Yeah? Do you, what do you think I'm a green or? What's yeah. that? Is that what you think? You didn't intimidate me. You think that's what you think I'm not you trying. Am I. Do you, you think you're trying to intimidate me? Yeah, you're trying to intimidate You both stood over me, looming like you're going to intimidate me. Do you think you're going to intimidate me? You've been doing this since I was 10 years. Oh, mate. Okay. So you're choosing right. then? Okay. It's easy enough for his review, so... Yeah. The driver's defiance means he's arrested and will be tested back at the station. Good result, all in all. He refused to provide breath sample. And I think they've locked him up for suspicion of theft of motor vehicle as well. So he'll go to custody now, see if he'll provide back there, and if not, um, it'll be done for failing to provide. But it's a good result, one in custody. With the driver off to the nick, Chris and Dan decide to check on the man with the mangled Merc. What are the chances you think that he'll just drive out in front of us, isn't it? <laughs> and lo and behold. <laughs> He's driving off, in it? You are kidding me. Oh, that is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> oh, no. What a... Plonker? Come and join us again, mate. Seconds out, round two. Right. So, here we are again. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned. Something which you may later learn in court and anything you do say it may be given in evidence. What was the advice or what did we tell you? Take it home and leave it parked there. That's what I'm doing. You just want to take it home and leave it parked there. And what did we say was the consequences of you well, doing you, that? What if you think give me, um, what's it called? Tell me and to take me home. Well, why why would we do that? Because then we're potentially then aiding you in committing offences. It's not the ticket home the suspect was hoping for. I might do a ticket for no MOT. I know he's already got one, but he's taking Mick by driving that away, despite us telling him he shouldn't be. And if I don't give him anything for MOT, he's just going to continue into. What do you mean? I take it home from that. Well, what did I say when you said you live a minute away? Can I take it home? What did I say? I said no, you can't because you'll commit further offences. The suspect's excuse of only living a minute away is as dodgy as his car, and Chris is close to losing his rag. What don't you understand about not driving that car? I don't understand what you don't understand. I don't care how far you live, I've told you. You cannot drive that vehicle in that condition. It's dangerous. That will kill somebody. I'm not angry and frustrated that you have chosen to drive that vehicle knowing you could cause those injuries to somebody. And that's why my face isn't very happy. The driver received six points on his license, a hundred pound fine, a victim surcharge of £30 and costs of £85. The runner from the Range Rover had a change of heart down the station and blew under the drink driving limit. The car turned out to be a hire car in the name of the driver. No further action was taken against him or his passenger. Still to come. Currently failing to stop for me on St. Stephen's Road. Spenner pursues a suspect on four wheels. Stop and then on two. And a boy racer stages a sit-in protest on his bonnet. If you don't get off the car, physical force will be used. Bradford, a city of over half a million. 
one that has seen a rise in investment in recent years. But this metropolitan melting pot still keeps the interceptors on their toes. Spit it out! Spit it out! It took me a while to get used to it, really. Because it's just... it's crazy. I joined traffic in 2009. I came from working in Rusfield Town Centre to working here. And this is on a totally different planet. Whatever, if you think you've seen it all, come here and I guarantee you won't. It's the start of the late shift, and interceptor Chris Spenner Spencer is out with rookie Haley French. Chris is an advanced driver whose favourite subject at school was maths. And something doesn't add up with the VW in front. Chris suspects the driver doesn't have any insurance, but before they can run the details, the VW makes a break for it. He's not stopping here, Rich. X-ray Romeo, X-ray one. Here we go. The pursuit is on. X-ray Romeo, three one. It's not on that. It's the middle of the school holidays with children out playing, but the BW is tearing it through the streets, ragging it straight over a busy junction. Stop me and St. Stephen's Road. Jesus. Traffic is light and safe. Continue. Can I request a pack, please? I am TPAC trading a suitable vehicle. TPAC stands for Tactical Pursuit and Containment. And Chris needs more units to help bring this pursuit to an end. We are a right right onto Tetchborn Road. 3 0. And it is safe to continue. The VW is flooring it over speed bumps, but try as he might, he's unable to shake off advanced driver Chris. Left. Left. To New Cross Street, an immediate right on Stunning. You have to do this. Kill it. It's right onto Evans Terrace. Continue. The suspect clearly doesn't care for other road users or pedestrians and heads straight across a pavement. Yeah, you right? Yeah, good. Oh, there you go. Romeo 3, what we are now on to Parkside Road. Speed is 5 0 miles an hour. Traffic is lying, it's still safe to continue. After leading Chris on a chase through the estates, the VW now heads down the back alleys. Might be Park Cat, do Jump the kids. Just in a back alley, we're going to come out into parts I really going to believe. Just one sec. Yeah, we now want to Woodroy Terrace. Unable to shake Chris, the suspect decides to try a different means of escape. <laughs> While Haley chases on foot. Can you bike? Come on, guys. Chris goes from four wheels to two as he commandeers a bicycle. And footage of Spenner's sprint after the suspect is even captured on a mobile phone. I lost him on that corner. I'll go down there. Unfortunately, Spenner fails to summon his inner Chris Boardman and the suspect manages to escape. Yeah, sorry. I was out running. I've lost him now. Here's your mail in a white top. They return to the abandoned vehicle for some post-pursuit analysis, and it looks like they've got an audience. Well, no, cast are coming there, so I went for a bike, but you're in lowest gear, so... You're in the lowest gear, and the saddle were too low. Those are my reasons for not catching up with him. Not that he's a middle-aged man, slowly on the decline. I've got a fast car. I've got a fast car. Have you what felt whatever this stuff is? Try to run with this. Try, try to run with someone on your back. While most of the gathered crowds seem good-natured, their numbers are growing. And it only takes a few bad eggs to change the atmosphere. Oh! Get off the car! Get off the car! 
Some people shouldn't mistake my niceness for weakness here. Well, the mischief soon turns into something less friendly. Eggs are beginning to be thrown at the police car. Their aim is as poor as their attitude. But if you try enough times... These sorts of situations can quickly escalate. And eggs are followed by rocks. A stone shatters the windscreen. And it's not just the car that's a target. Yeah. Oh. So now we're getting a bit naughty. One of these rocks could seriously injure them, yet Chris has seen it all too often. Amazing. It's amazing how people play up to a crowd, isn't it? Safety in numbers. And before the situation turns any worse, it's time for Haley and Chris to move out. If we're going to get the window smashed, it's going to be now as well. People thinking, oh, we're going to get one of the poor rat cops. Ha ha. It's happening more and more because people have just got such disdain for us. In some areas, anyway. And I suppose it's it's that mob mentality when someone starts, some one person starts doing it and starts egging everyone else on, it gets worse quickly. At least nothing's been smashed about it before. I've had bricks thrown at car, so eggs here. I'm gonna have to bloody spend five minutes. Oh, they have smashed my window. So the car is now off the road. The driver is still outstanding, but the car was recovered by the owner, who claims it was stolen in a burglary. The investigation continues. With new powers to take untaxed cars off the road, the interceptors are cracking down on offending drivers. Sophie Hawkswell and Chris Basto have come to assist their colleagues who've stopped two men in a blue Audi that's come up as having no tax or insurance. You're wishing you'd gone to McDonald's? Is yeah, it the but... rotation from McDonald's? Yeah, I've come in this one going because I thought it was to lead into McDonald's. And I've come here and I'm not. But there's no McDonald's. It's yeah. close. It's Sergeant Sophie knows all about fast food. She used to work for a well-known burger chain before becoming a copper. Her partner, Chris, prefers a Chinese takeaway, and he's a self-confessed petrol head. What power did they come out of in the factory? Enough, I say, because normally, after a few years, it starts losing quite a bit of power. The tools are break standard, but it's mapped up. But the motor's tech spec isn't the issue. With regards to the, uh, the tax, unfortunately, we didn't quite these, and we are going to see the car. You're taking the car? We are. So we've, this... got, we've got no alternatives. No the news isn't well received. Do you know what? Last time I gave a cop on my key, they lost it, so yeah, listen, yeah. get this on camera here. Yeah. It's all on camera. Right, I'm passing this cop on my key now, so... Yeah. No yeah. And now the passenger's claiming someone else is to blame for their situation. You know it is, brother, you see Romanians, Kosovan, driving round in motors, six of a man up there, no, no, you don't all about it. Well, I don't, because when I see it, I take car off them. And the driver makes an interesting confession. This cool. is why I failed to stop at half the time. You know what, I wish I failed to stop then, because I know I got away from it. Got me. And then, but then you fail to stop and you're looking at this... You get done for dangerous driving, won't you? I get away, I smoke out. But he's not getting away with having no tax. I'm just going to give you the ticket now. And there's also the issue of no insurance. This police officer may also drive any motor vehicle or motorcycle. Not the driver's got a letter which he says shows that he's insured. That policy there covers me driving. But he's called. But he's called Co-op, who look after your policy, and they've said that's what you've got, you've got to bring up with them. They're the one who basically caused it to be seized by saying you're not covered. If it were tax and insured, you wouldn't have got well, stopped. Why would I pay tax for me? You give all the money to cost them. No, mate, why would I pay tax for me? Not your fit trolls. Man, because I took his cars. But taking his car might not see this boy racer off the road. Because <laughs> I've got an A6 at home that I'm off to go and jump in now. <laughs> no, but will you stop playing for No, I want to go jump in A6 now. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Two right. cars. And two cars is about to become one car as the recovery truck arrives. Right, you're taking the car for no tax and that's it. You're giving me a little relief form and I go and pay the £100 tomorrow and the £160 to get the car back straight away. Simple as. 
simple as, but Sophie has an even simpler idea. I thought it would have just been a lot easier to get it taxed and cheaper. And this delightful pair are back to blaming their favourite European scapegoats. Great tax, one no one fixes roads, one no one give it to all the possible. I don't know why you think about tax goes to Cosland, because road tax doesn't what's go through. What's all done? Who, who pays what tax, mate? We know people aren't dull, mate. Who pays that tax? Not road, pays, not road tax. Who's on, who's on, who's on dull? Not what's road tax. Road tax has nothing it's to do with dull, mate. does it? I'd sooner set up foreigners on fire. All about that, mate. Burn a lot well, of that's out. a great attitude to have, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Absolutely that's brilliant. Why it, that's why it couldn't be state is in, because people think like you. Yeah, of course. Labour people, mate. I'm not a racist, so that's why they think like me. Well, that comment you just made is racist. No, it Now the driver decides to stage a sit-in. On the car bonnet. He's going to have a long wait, pal. I'm waiting for the insurance to come back. Have you got a key? Yeah, we're, I'm, we're going to pull him off here if he don't come off. I'm going to yeah, ask yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. The, the car needs to go. We're not. Hey. Uh, Bobby, you have to get off the car. If you don't get off the car, physical force will be used. Do you want to sign? Well, yeah. yeah. Do you want to sign for the ticket I'm about to give you? No. No, I'm not waiting. Decline. What? So I've got to wait for you, but you, you can't wait, wait for me, no? Do you want to sign for the no, ticket? No, 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 listen to me. Oh, you no, can't, you can't wait for me. You haven't been reasonable at any point, have you? You set your bankers. Thank you. That's what you've found. There you go, Robert. That's the ticket. It appears that the lads have finally admitted defeat. Yes, it's <laughs> they're just not happy because cars being seized, and then that's when the attitude's changed because they're not getting what they want, and then it's all our fault supposedly. My argument is, if it were taxed and insured, it wouldn't have been stopped and count being seized. So if you abide by the rules of the road, there's no issue. Oh, what's what? But this boy racer seems keen to have the last word. I've had 180 mile an hour out of that car, man. Any beamer up, man. <laughs> Any beaver, that M1 there, man, 180, get off. The driver was later reported for driving a car with no tax or insurance. He awaits his day in court. No action was taken against the passenger. Sophie and Chris are used to situations like this, but that doesn't make them any easier to handle. There's no need, really, is there, for them to behave in that way. At the end of the day, road tax isn't that expensive. They don't want to pay road tax because that tax goes to pay for, for Kosovans, as they said. This is just absolutely ridiculous. They obviously don't even know what road tax goes to pay for. Doesn't matter who you are, if you're not tax insured, we will stop you uh, and we will take your car off you. Still to come. Ah, um, I should date a birth. A young lad tries to pass off as an older gent. Uh, 1966. 1966? It's early morning in Little Horton Green, and rookie Eve Boardman is out on patrol with interceptor Chris Percy. And who better to show her the ropes than this veteran cop? Chris is a multi-talented musician who plays for the West Yorkshire Police Band. He's got an ear for a tune, but also an eye for a dodgy driver. It's thrill. He spotted a VW. He wants to give the once over. Six, Hello, you all right? Yeah. Not to worry about. We're just doing some stop checks with it being this time of night. You all right? Just jump in the back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The man is led to the police car for a routine chat. Uh, Won't be long, guys. All right. <sighs> What's your name? Uh, talent. Talent. Is this your car, Talent? Yeah. Like I said, it's not to worry about. Just we do stop checks at this time of night, that's all. Insured on it? Yeah. MOT tax? Yeah. Cool. So far, so good for talent. But the questions are about to get tricky. Um, what's your date of birth? Pardon? Date of birth? Uh, 1966. Birth year of 1966 means this baby faced driver is apparently. 52 years of age. What's your full birthday? Oh, sorry. Uh, it's all right. 6th of, Ju 6th of Ju June 1996. Do you mean 1966, it? sorry. 6th of June. 8th of June, sorry. 8th of June 1996. 1966. 1966? I feel like I'm drunk now. <laughs> As talent ensures, he gets breathalyzed later. Eve continues to probe for the truth. When's your birthday? 1966. How old are you? About 42. Quite uh, I don't look young. No talent. You look like you might be lying. You're no. 42? Yeah. Have you got any ID on you? You look about 20. I, I didn't even bring no ID. Oh, I didn't got... no ID on you. Who are you? Pardon? What, what are your real details? 
Eighth of June, nineteen sixty-six. Yeah. Right. So, what's your exact birth? What's your exact? How old are you? Uh, what's your age? My age. Yeah. Forty. Forty-two. Forty-two. Yeah. And you're born in nineteen sixty-six. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't add up, though, does it? Yeah, it does. Talent by name, but not so talented at maths. Think about it. Nineteen sixty-six, and you're forty-two. It doesn't add up, does it? How old are you, really? Talent story and sums might not add up, but experienced Chris has it all worked out. Your dad's policy and you're not insured, are you? Bingo. Does it sound about right? Policy, yeah. So you're not a, insured on it. Have you got a licence? Yeah, I've got a licence. Have you? Does your dad know you're driving it? Pardon? Does no, your dad no. know you're driving it? No. no. What will your dad do when he finds out? Probably He's going to what? Freak out. Not only for nicking his car, but also for not knowing his birthday. So you don't know how old, how old your dad is, do you? He was born in 1966. He will be 52. We're not stupid talent, you know. You really look 40 odd. <laughs> Good try, though. <laughs> Having failed the maths exam, it's time for a new test. Have you had a drink at all tonight? I'll just check, we'll just eliminate alcohol out of your system, just have a, we'll have a, a breath test from you. That's it. Keep going, 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 that's it. It's that. You just want to pull that tube out, stick it in your pocket, it's been in your mouth, and dispose of it somewhere or keep it as a souvenir. It's a better result for talent this time. Yeah, that's good. Green light, at least you haven't been drinking. And Chris has a theory as to why talent is out in his dad's motor. He's gone to bed and you've just nicked it, have you? Pardon? He's, he's gone to bed and you've just uh, took the keys and gone out with it. If talent took the vehicle without permission, he could be in further trouble. He could be arresting you for theft of motor vehicle this moment in time because you're, you're driving it without his consent. But Chris gives talent and his family a break. Well, what we'll do, because it's your dad, and he'll probably want to, we'll, we'll support you, is uh, we're going to, you're going to be reporting the offence of driving with no insurance. The vehicle has got, um, it's MOT, your, your licence is in order. It's just that you're driving this vehicle uninsured. Um, so you're going to be reported for the offence of driving with no insurance. Or, put another way, six points on his licence and a 300 quid fine. And the vehicle will be seized and recorded by us because obviously you can't drive it any further. It's been an expensive night for talent. That, that's 150 pounds, so I'd imagine they'll be chasing you. Are you working? They'll probably chase you up for that, won't he? And then there's a storage fee of 20 pound a day, so the longer he leaves it there, the more he's going to rack up the charges. Yeah, I don't know why you, you're working and you can afford it. Why don't you get yourself insured? Yeah, I was, I was, obviously I was going to get myself insured on it, but I've only like, literally just started working. Yeah. I just had bad luck with you lot stopping me and shit. Well, there's loads of us. It was a high risk. I mean, it's your yeah. choice, isn't it? Finding out the hard way, aren't you? Yeah, well, All right. Yep, yeah, OK. As talent heads off, wishing he'd paid more attention in GCSE maths, Chris sums the night up. He was just making figures up in his head. Quite often people have something prepared that's a bit more realistic, but I think we just caught him on the hop. He wasn't expecting to be stopped. And he was just trying to make it as he goes along. So, uh, yeah, pretty unbelievable, that one. The police interceptors are back new next Monday at 8. Into the murky world of the notorious Noonan brothers tonight, Manchester's narco kings, blood and fear, is new at 10. Right after a World War II bomb puts everyone on high alert in New Paddington Station 24-7. Coming up next. He stood at the gate with a kitchen knife saying he's going to stab police. Crime is on the rise. Armed with an axe and a machete. Trying to break into two separate houses. But come at the hour. More units, more units. Come at the interceptors. Get off! Out and running, out and running. We're riding with West Yorkshire's elite. 
Contact! Alongside their pursuit drivers. Contact, contact, standby. On target with their firearms unit. In the air with their eye in the sky. Off and running, off and running. This is the front line in the fight against crime. This is police interceptors. I cannot believe we get paid to do this. Yeah. Coming up, there oh, is. this is gonna go. A pursuit on a road to nowhere. It's gonna go down towards the dead end. It's gonna be the camp. It's the end of the line for a stolen motor. Turn it off, turn it off, turn it off! Out the car. I'll break on now! Get out. And don't walk off, fella. <laughs> An early morning runner gets nicked. Give me Peter, give me Peter, sorry. Sorry, sorry, but sorry. Get your hands behind oh, your back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Saturday night has just turned into Sunday morning. I was just confirm uh, Toyota Starlet and give us the reg again. Interceptors Ben Pearson and Matt Ransom are out looking for a car which has been linked to a couple of thefts earlier in the evening. There's a, a Toyota Starlet which has hit cameras in the local area. So hopefully we can drop on it and get them locked up. 17-year veteran Ben is a big fan of all 80s music. And he knows that getting hold of villains is often like Kylie's hit song, a case of, I should be so lucky. Take your gamble, you buy a lottery ticket, you take your chance. So I do think you make your own luck in a way, but I also think if you're out there trying, it'll look favourably upon you. And Lady Luck does indeed seem to be smiling on our dynamic duo as they spot the starlet in a petrol station. Is that a Toyota starlet there? Is that Papa? Oh. But just as they pull in behind it, yes. oh, this is going to go. The driver spots them and speeds off from the petrol station. Make sure we are three, two. We enjoy what failed to stop in Keithley on the Hardings Road. The one litre Toyota is no match for Ben's 3 Series Beamer in terms of grunt, so the driver decides to use its size, squeezing in and out of traffic and then taking to the opposite lane. Yeah, speed is 5 at 0 miles an hour. It's a red Toyota Starlet. It's the weekend and the roads are busy, but that doesn't stop the driver taking the wrong side of the road once again before running a red light. Then he drives the wrong way up a one-way street. He's turned left, left, left onto the high street. But Ben knows exactly where he's going and heads him off. The Toyota's not getting away that easily. Yes, yes, train authorised. And super vehicle. You need to stop a Thornton. We're currently at South Street. Left in towards left, Woodhouse. Left, left. In towards Woodhouse Estate. Going to Woodhouse Estate. The car's heading towards a local estate. The driver could be looking to lose Ben in the maze of streets before bailing out. Current speed 3-0 on Woodhouse Road. It's going to go towards Halifax right, Road. Right, right. But instead of driving into the estate, the Toyota takes off in the opposite direction and heads out of town. It's going to come out at Halifax Road, possibly. Five at zero miles an hour. The driver then takes to a cobbled country lane. Yes, yes, yes. Just turn left, left, left onto Hainsworth Lane. Goes over the top towards Cullingworth. Current speed is 30 miles an hour, three zero. The car then dives down a dirt track. It's going to go down towards a dead end. It's going to be a decamp. 
Back okay, towards Woodhouse, left, please. Left, left, down towards um, Woodhouse. Puffle decamp. The clouds of dust mean Ben can hardly see, and the bumpy track is giving his car a proper battering. This pursuit is getting out of control. Interceptors Ben Pearson and Matt Ransom have been involved in a pursuit with a car linked to a couple of thefts earlier in the evening. Failed to stop in Keithley on Hardings Road. The driver made a number of dangerous manoeuvres in the town centre. It's turned left, left, left onto the high street. But before heading out into the countryside... Yes, 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 just turned left, left, left onto Hainsworth Lane. And driving down a dirt track... It's going to go down towards the dead end. It's going to be a decamp. Ramping up the risk level to the max. They're going to get out and go down towards Woodhouse Estate. Yeah, I can't If you mean decamp, it's going to go down to Woodhouse Estate. They're going down the um, Old Name Road. We're unable to follow down there, mate. It's just garrow grind out just there. Yeah, we can't follow, unfortunately. It's gone down the, um, the dirt track. The pursuit's over. The rough terrain would wreck the police car. And it'll be difficult to catch the runners in the dark. Ben knows the area well and suspects they'll have ditched it up ahead. Right, mate, do you want to get out yeah. with a torch? Basically, that goes on for about 500 metres. Right. But I can't get the car down. Yeah, fine. Right, I'll go around the other way. All right. Matt disappears into the darkness while Ben uses his local knowledge and heads round to see if he can spot the runners. Where we've just pursued them, you won't know that exists unless you live in this local area. So that vehicle's probably either going to be abandoned or... Well, to be honest, it will be abandoned because I don't think you can get a car down there now. It's that bad. This is where it comes out here. Matt's with the motor. It has been ditched and whoever was in it is long gone, along with the keys. Ben parks up and makes his way up the track. Can it be driven out, or what's your thoughts? Yeah, there's no keys with it. It can't be driven out. You're right. Ben's been joined by local officer Sam. Uh, They're a quick little car. Yeah, well, they are. Old style, that's brilliant. So you don't realise how bad this is until you're trying to drive down it. Now they need to get the Toyota moved, and with no keys... It's not going to be easy. See, so the thing is, you're not going to get recovery down here, so we've got no. two options. We have a put steering lock and brake it and then roll it down. The recovery after coming morning. Where we are now, there's um, there's known criminals that live down the road in the bottom part of the area down there. If we leave the vehicle set where it is, they're going to come back for it. Um, and obviously it's going to be used in crime again. We have got it back, which is a good job all in all, but... Hopefully, forensics might get something on the car and we'll go from there and try and apprehend an offender. Matt flexes his biceps and tries to break the steering lock, but notices a phone ringing in the footwell, probably left by one of the runners. Someone's phone's ringing. Hello. How are we doing? Aaron's phone. Aaron, what? Aaron, who? Your nephew? What's his last name? Aaron's? Um, just by Woodhouse Road. Yeah, Come and get friends to meet you, and I'll uh, give you back. The caller isn't keen to retrieve the phone, but he has given him some important intel. Just had a nice phone call to tell us that the phone in the car is um, Aaron. So, we some inquiries on that name, and um, we try to identify who he is, where he is and also his friends who are in car as well. But the first priority is to get the car shifted. And they'll need to break the steering lock, which is designed not to be easily budged. Squash player Matt is close to celebrating a decade on the force. Before that, he was a personal trainer. And the steering lock's giving him a good workout. Come on, hurt uh, yourself. It's only about an inch thick. You'll do it, keep going. All right. Keep going. But Ben has a solution. It's not going off, is it? <laughs> it ain't going off, is it, that? What I'll do is I'll see if I can get Steve here with X5. He can pull it out. As manpower can't shift the steering wheel, he's hoping the horsepower of the police 4x4 will do the job. But first, they try a more basic tool. We need some sort of... Well, yeah. 
<laughs> How many traffic cops does it take to get a Toyota Stella Awards? <laughs> Joking aside, they can't leave the car here in case the runners come back for it. I think if you tie it around this side, it's forcing it around. It's time for the X5. What happens? I know what's likely to happen. I think it'd be pretty, I would suggest. Go on, go on. There you go, stop. There you go, done. Ben's brainwave has done the job. The hard to shift motor is finally moving. <laughs> okay. Right, go on, get going. See, all they needed were a bit of thought. They've got all that muscle, but they don't have old blade, do they? The Toyota's finally out of the woods and onto the back of a recovery truck. Steering's quite heavy. They may not have caught the people in it, but getting this old banger out of circulation is a good result for the team. If we didn't get that vehicle recovered tonight, it'll just be using crime again. If they can't get it out from where it was up there, they just set it on fire. it would become a danger to members of the public, so... The best thing we've done is get it recovered and uh, we'll do some investigation and try and trace the drive. Despite examining the car and the phone in the footwell, they were unable to discover who was driving. No one was arrested in relation to the driving and theft offences. The car was later destroyed. The days of nicking a car by breaking into it and hot wiring it are long gone. The most common way vehicles are stolen now is via Hanoi burglaries. Named after the first operation set up to target these burglars more than 15 years ago. Hanoi burglaries where people break into houses specifically to take the keys and take cars off driveways. It's big business at the moment. If they like them and they're fast cars and they think they might give us a run for our money in our cars, they'll keep them, put them on false plates and use them to commit further burglaries, so they can try and use them as essentially getaway cars. They will sell them as they come, or they will, again, sell them on, but for parts. Clear left. Cheers. What car is it? Ford Fiesta. What colour is it? Silver. Anything on the MPR for course, right about this time. Just a kiss. It's pub kicking out time, and interceptors Chris Spencer and Kev Shaw are on the hunt for a car stolen in a Hanoi burglary, which has hit several number plate recognition cameras. It's been seen like the other side of Bradford, and we've been, we, I thought it's going away from us, but it's now it's, it seems it's turned around, it's going back towards us now. So we're going to try head it off at the pass down here. It's not too far away, really. The police pair, Kevin Spenner, joined the force on the same day almost 16 years ago. Before then, motorbike and Rochdale FC loving Kev worked as the manager of a well-known supermarket. Whereas his partner, Chris, a.k.a. Spenner, who's a big fan of Brooklyn Nine-Nine and Sienna Miller, worked in road construction. And it's the road the stolen Fiesta might be on that's frustrating them tonight. Not that way. No Fiesta up there. Should we say he's gone AS65? It's going to go back to Bradford. They know where and when the stolen car's been seen. But despite that, the radio's gone quiet and the Fiesta seems to have vanished. There's only so much racing around you can do. We can drive really fast everywhere, but you're always you're always playing catch up. And when you drive past two or three junctions, it's exponential the amount of the ways it could be gone. But then the stolen car pings another camera, a fair few miles away and just outside West Yorkshire. Just getting off the option cameras. I have to be here to win it early, it's a long way though. We're playing catch up again now. We're gonna go visit North Yorkshire. We'll see how those guys are doing. West Yorkshire shares a border with five different police forces. It's common practice to work together to nick villains. As Spenner and Kev approach the border, a North Yorkshire car has caught up with the elusive Fiesta. How far past Hubie are you? Yep, we're coming up to the behind now. Oh, we're into Hubie now. Spenner and Kev are close to their colleague and soon join him behind the stolen Fiesta. 
Five zero to car two. Yeah, you in any position to attempt to stop it? It's two one. How many units are there behind us? Five zero. We're behind you. Have we got a third vehicle close by? Uh, my intention is once we've got three vehicles together, we've got a three car box on this vehicle uh, when the opportunity arises. Just approaching the roundabout A61. Stop by. They plan to stop the stolen car with a tactical pursuit and containment, or TPAC, where three police vehicles box in a car. So they'll have to wait for a third unit. To catch up. This is where we kind of got to use some of the tactics that we get taught just to minimise risk. I kind of want to just pull out and take his nose off, but I think I'll be told off for doing that. Thankfully, Spenner doesn't have to take any drastic action. Yeah, you're clear to come and overtake now and join the vehicle. The third car soon catches up. 2 1 North Yorkshire, that's the first one to you. They have authorised him to stop. Okay, thank you. We're going to need two one then, have we got all three vehicles together? Yeah, preemptive box, you go first, Steph. I'll go on to offside rear back. It's time to T-pack. Looking clear now. Now, let's go, go, go. We'll get you full of it. Turn your engine off, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off! Oh, out the car. I'll break on now! Get out. Ain't got anything on you, you shouldn't have. No. Whose car is it? Easy question, whose car is it? Okay. Stop, stop, There's no injuries, no damage. It's been a textbook T-Pack. The stolen motor's been stopped and they have the driver. Jump in. And the passenger. Whose car is it? Put your window up. Whose car is it? What's your name? Whose yeah. car is it? Oh, I've just been driven under the driver driving all paragraphs. You've just been what? Driven under the driver driving all Alright. Yeah. And you're banned as well? Yeah, it's shown as an outstanding oh, stolen. Right. You're under arrest, sir. So I'm getting done first for stealing it. You've been arrested, you've been arrested for stealing it. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I'm sure that sounds like some, someone who's stolen it, sir. West and North Yorkshire have combined forces and got the job done. So stolen car and false plates, it's, that, 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 that's a great result. It's been stolen for a couple of months. Milado's pleading in ignorance, but it's not the first time I've heard that. Taking it down to the police station now, and we'll see, we'll see what he's got to say. He ain't the brains of Britain, the lad. But when he says, oh, I ain't stolen it, mate, that's what a car thief would probably say. It's, it's a car thief's prerogative to lie, so... The truth will come out. The car's believed to have been stolen via a Hanoi burglary. Kev checks the details. Yeah, can you just confirm? Is it just uh, is it theft of motor vehicle? Is it a burglary? No, it's uh, shown as a burglary residential, so a Hanoi. Right, you're under arrest on suspicion of burglary as well. And the contents of the car won't help his defence. Bear in mind, these lads are innocent. It's just what, what they say he's done, paid 100 quid to take it somewhere, obviously. I know whenever I go out in a stolen car, you always make sure you take your burgling stuff with you. Everyone needs like your burgling hat with its goggles on, it's all on there with gloves. So these guys are up to no good. It's, it's, it's a bit chilly time, but it ain't, it ain't balaclava and gloves weather, is it? Back at the Nick, Kev books in the driver. It's been a satisfying evening's work. The gentleman we've had, he's been arrested for burglary. Um, this vehicle's been taken from a burglary where people break into your house, nick your keys, and then make off with your car. So the car were on false place trying to avoid detection and we've found it and stopped it and got him. He's also shown as a disqualified driver until he's passed his driving test. He's never bothered taking a driving test so he's been further arrested for disqualified driving. We joined this job to basically get stolen cars back and tonight we've, we've done it. Another childhood dream ticked off the list. The driver couldn't be connected to the burglary so the charges were dropped. However, he was charged with theft of a motor vehicle disqualified driving and no insurance. He awaits his day in court. No further action was taken against the passenger. And Kev's delighted to get them off the road. Still to come. Hello. Hello. swapping seats. Some front seat trading places. I'll be driving. No, you won't. I'll be. No, you won't. Not unless you grow on a beard. A dodgy driver tells some porkies. Where's the keys? 
Nicky. Yeah. No, Don't walk up, fella. <laughs> and white van man nearly takes out the interceptors. You've come and drifted straight onto my carriage where you've actually nearly put me into concrete barrier. The number of uninsured vehicles seized by the cops is on the rise. Last year, over 140,000 of them were taken off the roads. The interceptors have a theory why people drive uninsured. Not insurance is a big thing, definitely, but it's a bit of a, a kind of catch-22, isn't it? A lot of people can't afford the insurance, so they take the risk. If they get caught, the car gets taken off them and they'll risk a fine or a point, but that puts the premiums up in certain areas, which then puts it out of reach for even your average person. Might be twice as much the car's even worth, and, and people just can't afford that, so they, they just take the risk more and more. A new day is dawning, and as the early birds start to go about their business, Interceptor Dan Robson and rookie Emily Walker are coming to the end of their night shift and are taking a trip round Emily's home turf. East Leeds never sleeps. Not so I've heard. Dan may not be an expert on East Leeds, but in his more than 15 years on the job, He's developed an eagle eye for dodgy drivers. And as they cruise through the residential streets of Hare Hills, he clocks a car making a swift right turn. Oh, Nino. That gets his wrong and radar twitching. And in the less than 15 seconds he takes to catch up, the driver's already out of the car. Hey, old fella. Fella, is it your, is it your car? This one? Yeah, this one. No, my God. Right, where's the keys? The key. Yeah. No key. I've just watched you get out of the driver's seat. Don't walk up, fella. <laughs> sorry. No, no, no. I, I give you key, I give you key. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, boss. Sorry. Get your hands behind oh, your back. Oh, sorry. What are you doing? Right. Oh. Get in the car. Get in the oh, car. I'll give you key. Give me the key now. Yes, the key. Then. Where's the key? He dropped it on the floor. The driver's trying to hide something. Dan's got a hunch what it might be. Have you got your licence with you? I know. You've got no licence, right? <clears throat> Why try and run? Why run? I don't know this time. Emily's also had a run of the car and driver's details through the police national computer. There's no insurance. Right, there's no trace of him on any system. Have you got any ID at all? Yes, I have the phone. Anything in the car? No. Sorry, darling. I'm not you, darling. Right, so he hasn't got any ID. So I'm just going to drive the car and follow um, Dan round to his home address to get his ID. The man lives just a few streets away. And once he's cuffed... Um, that's a problem, believe me. Well, you've oh, tried to run away. Well. You've tried to run away already, so... He goes in and gets his passport. Two minutes. Yeah, but you have to take this one home, please. Right, hang on. Just wait here, she'll get it. Yeah, I'm waiting here, yeah? The Dawn driver's recently arrived in the UK from Romania, and his reticence in getting a driving licence has caused him big problems. Yeah, strange one really. We're just um, knocking about around the Hare Hills area of Leeds and we see this car and it looks like it's done a bit of a, a lucky left type manoeuvre. Doesn't want to speak to us. And as we've come around the corner, he's, um, he's just getting out of the car and walking away from it. He obviously didn't want to speak to us. Um, and then he started to try and run. I don't like people that try and make me run. Um, and the reason being, it turns out he's got no licence for insurance, so I'm just going to do the paperwork now to report him and take the car off him. So uh, it'll take about five or ten minutes, but he'll have to walk to work, I'm afraid. You're going to be reported for driving without licence or insurance. OK, we're taking the car. You're taking the car? Yeah. Now? Yeah. You can get the car back but we're taking it out because you can't drive without a licence or insurance. This is a big problem. It is a big problem. Yeah. But it'd be an even bigger problem if you had a crash 
without a licence or insurance. No. Or, worse than that, if you had a crash and someone died, you'd be going to prison. And then it'd be a big problem, wouldn't it? Is that your wife in there or girlfriend? Yes. Who's going to put food on the table? It's serious. Okay. Only one time. It only takes one time, though, doesn't it? You could drive to the end of the street and someone that's had too much to drink, someone drunk could walk out in front of you. You need to have a licence and you need to have insurance by law and you haven't got either. So that's why you sat here now. All right. Once he's got his things out of the car... Happy you've got everything, yeah. The not-so-happy ex-driver walks to work. Poor lad. Come here for a better life, provide for his family. Yeah, fair play, but away his car. Do it legally. The man was later charged with driving with no licence or insurance and fined £1,053 and given eight points to be put on his licence once he gets one. His car wasn't recovered from the pound, so was destroyed. Dan's still not happy about his early morning exercise. Trying to run for something as simple as no docks. Why bother? You know, you know you're not going to get locked up for it, so... A lot of people just hold their hands up and take it on the chin, but he didn't want to, did he? But Emily's got a far more serious problem. I broke a nail. Broke a nail? Mm. Damn. Yeah, it happens quite regular, to be honest. You can't have nice nails in this job. No, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I was all right. Just about. <laughs> it's Saturday night, and interceptors Wayne Hutchison and Carl Charlie Farley are on the lookout for a car allegedly involved in a hit and run. Someone just shouted up that there's been a couple of mopeds um, and a Corsa. Uh, Corsa deliberately smashed yeah, into her uh, and then made off. They've got an idea where the car's heading, but the roads are empty. This car could be anywhere, couldn't it? Yeah. Then they get an update. Yeah, that motorbike's just gone past me, um, Middleton uh, Ring Road. God, it's miles away, it's right, yeah, down, to, right down there, isn't it? The car's been spotted by a colleague halfway across the county. Huddersfield Town and Peter K. Fan Wayne worked in banking before he became a cop 19 years ago. His partner Carl is also a big fan of the Lancastrian comic and was an electrician before joining the force. But they both know the roads like the backs of their hands. So they hit the motorway as it's the quickest route to the Corsa. Advanced driver Wayne's hitting almost 100 in the outside lane. But then... A van in the middle lane starts drifting into his path, nearly forcing him into the central reservation. Without Wayne's swift reactions and driving skills, this could have been a fatal collision. He's texting. Texting. Even though they're on their way to another job, they can't ignore the driver's actions and suspect he may have been distracted. We've just passed a, a van and it starts to come onto our lane. So Wayne's had to swerve to avoid a collision. And as we've passed him, I've looked and he's, he's texting on his phone, messing about with his phone. This is me coming down here. Yeah. That's it, isn't it? Wayne bangs on the sirens, and this time the van driver does notice the police car and pulls over. Having narrowly avoided a serious smash, Carl's not in the best of moods. This fella's going to get a right earful. Come this side! Come this side! Thank you, no Sorry, mate. It's not a good place to be. Just come and take a seat with us two minutes. And he seems unfazed by the situation. Just jump in, just need a quick word with you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck, thank you. <laughs> You're all ticket, mate. I'm sorry, it's just the... Um, I suppose I don't want to confirm... I'm trying to get him used to the bloody control. This is an iPad, I've only had it. To right. It won't work out the controls. Right, so what, so messing about with your phone or something? No, I wasn't messing about with my phone. You had it held up in front of you as we passed you? Not my phone, I didn't. Wayne's heard enough. Right, whether I do you that, whether, whether I prosecute you for your mobile phone or do you care? Because I'll tell you what, no, no, 
listen to what I'm saying to you. Yeah, yeah. I will do the talking, you will do the listening now. Yeah. I'm responding to an incident. I've been laying free of the motorway and I'm overtaking you. You've come and drifted straight onto my carriage where you've actually nearly put me into concrete barrier. Yeah, I'm sorry. We've I'm nearly had. Just bear with me. For 31 years, I'm not I, I'm not um, some shitter or anything. I'm not saying that you are, but what I'm saying is you've nearly put me into the barrier. It was a genuine mistake. The driver's straight up denying he was on his phone, but Carl's not convinced. Where is your mobile phone? My mobile phone's in the car. In the van? Whereabouts in the van? Hang on. On the, on the, in the, on the, the seat on the car. Carl finds a phone on the front seat. Things aren't looking good for the driver. On seat, next to... It's what? It, this it was on seat, it wasn't on charge, it was just on seat. Yeah, but it is on charge. It wasn't, it wasn't plugged in. No, I've not just unplugged that. Even though the phone was on the seat next to him, the man's insistent he wasn't using it. Well, I wasn't on the phone when you... Passed. You had something in your hand. Hopefully you've got it recorded. Got it recorded where you nearly put us into know, central I'm reservation. Stick a duplicate, it ticket on. I've gone for the light. Carl has a scan of the phone, but can't find any proof that the man was using it. So they're going to give him a ticket for driving without due care and attention. Be mindful if we're using the controls of the vehicle or whatever we're using while we're driving, we need to be concentrating on what we're doing, yeah? yeah. You... I've apologised, it was momentary thing. But that moment of lapse of concentration could have killed me, could have killed you, my colleague or somebody else that's travelling behind us, OK? We've been messing with Summer. Um, he's adamant it wasn't his phone. Well, he had something in his hand, he was messing with Summer. And were it not for Wayne's skillful driving, the outcome could have been far worse. Wayne's had to swerve towards the concrete central reservation to avoid a collision with this. And it is a prime example. You need to be concentrating 110% on your driving when you're on motorway. That could have been nasty, that. It could have been naughty. If it'd have hit us, if it'd have come over any more and hit us, Wayne wouldn't have had anywhere to go. would have been in that barrier, and who knows. The van driver accepted to take a driver retraining course instead of going to court for driving without due care and attention. When I got him out, they were all smiles, and I'm, I'm thinking, what are you smiling at? He just nearly wiped us out. But yeah, it just shows the dangers, just that little lapse, that second lapse of concentration ends up like that. Can I have a moving one, please, at Bradford Road at uh, Brighouse, please? It's just before sunrise, and interceptor Tony Rouse is behind a suspicious motor with four people on board. Registered police. She is the only permitted driver. The car's registered to a woman who's the only person insured to drive it, and that's where the problem is. I've got a funny feeling that it were bloke driving it, wasn't it? We'll just pull it over and uh, I will light it up and see if it pulls over. This driver is clearly paying attention and pulls over. But as the car comes to a stop, two people in the front appear to be changing places. The passenger's moving over to the driver's seat. Hello. Hello. It's no good, can't be on. It's no good swapping seats. Sorry. It's a real low more area. No, because you were driving, not her. I've driving. No, you won't. I've No, you won't. Not unless you've grown a beard. The front seat twosome are sticking to their story that she was driving. Can we get out? Just uh, stay there a minute. Wait. Tony needs to ask some more questions, but with four people to deal with, he calls back up. Drivers have swapped seats. Um, comes back to uh, a female and male were driving. Uh, just doing a bit of a lift. There's only me here. There's four in car. And reinforcements soon arrive in the form of Nick Priestley and Claire Gray. Hey up. It's insured to female. Um, there's only a female on it. I don't know who she is yet, I haven't got that far. Um, okay. But like I say, he were driving. All right, what's the with us? Nick takes the man off for a chat. He's still saying that he wasn't driving. Meanwhile, Claire's having a talk with the woman, who tells her a different tale. She says she were giving you a lesson. That's why you were driving? Yes, yeah, quite well, thank you. 20 past five is a strange time to be giving a driving lesson, and there aren't any L plates on the Golf. But whatever was happening, the car's not going to be driven any further. I'll tell you what we'll do, then we'll seize it. Right. 
We'll see, is it? She knows that I've got insurance. Right, yeah. Well, I've, I've got keys at the minute, so... Right. Yeah. Coolio. So, the car's going to the pound, and the four people in it will have to find another way of getting home. Nick's got the fun job of delivering the news. Unfortunately, my love, your car's getting seized this evening. All right, I'll tell you why. I'll, ex I'll explain to you why. All right, the guy that's driving doesn't have any licence or insurance. You've allowed him to drive. Okie dokie. So, well, there's, well, there's no way you can get it back. All right, but tonight it's getting seized. All right, because he doesn't have any insurance and he's been driving it. These guys at back have only got 100 yards to walk. There's a nice warm taxi rank over there. You can join them if you want. Right, so if you want to step out and then uh, we'll get you some paperwork and you can get on your way. Despite Nick's suggestion, the backseat passengers seem keen on hanging around. I thought you were going to taxi rank. It's probably recording you because you're acting like bloody idiots. Yep. Go well, that way. Taxi rank. What's happening with that friend then? What friend? That friend. In the car? You're going soon. I have to go home. Yeah. That's all right, he's going soon. Come on, come and talk to my mate over here and he'll explain everything. I'm not going to tell him. No. Jump in here. Tony's work is good enough for me, so if he says they were driving, they were driving it. Car's getting seized. He's been reported and uh, everybody's happy apart from his two here. It's been an eventful end to Tony's night shift. See you later. Take care. Let's yeah, you take you. care. Well, we've seen this car drive past and it's uh, it's five o'clock in the morning and it, there's four people in it, which straight away sort of arouses your suspicion. The female, um, although she was uh, at her backside in the driver's seat, uh, I think her legs and everything else were still in the passenger seat, so they were, they were in the process of swapping seats, basically. Um, so it was quite obvious to me. I've seen him driving. I'm quite happy that he was driving and that she's come up with some story because he's not insured and doesn't have a driving, uh, a driving license. The man was later reported for driving with no insurance. No action was taken against the woman in the car or the two backseat passengers. Coming up, a smashed up van. He has actually hit this. And a runaway driver. I believe you've been involved in an accident with your van. Is that right? Who reeks of booze. How much have you had to drink tonight, sir? Not a lot. Not a lot, OK. Turn your engine off. Over 70,000 people are caught drink driving each year. And as the officers that have to deal with the aftermath, most interceptors have zero tolerance of the offenders. Drink drivers really have absolutely no respect for the law. They drive on the road and put everybody else at danger. And it is a complete disregard for the law and disregard for anybody else's safety uh, as well as their own. Uh, and there's absolutely no excuse for it in my eyes. They are incredibly selfish and they will just do that without thought of anybody else. We see vehicle still there, take it. We see. It's Monday night, and interceptor Bob Hoyle and rookie Danny Mickey are on their way to a crash, allegedly involving a drunk driver. We're just going to report of a van that's crashing into some bollards in Elland. Uh, drivers potentially uh, been drinking. Veteran interceptor Bob's not far off celebrating a quarter century on the job. When he's not out on patrol, he likes nothing better than heading down to Valley Parade to watch the mighty Bradford City. We're on it now. Bollard's here. Oh, there, look. Just lift it back. He and Danny arrived to find some busted bollards and a smashed up van, but no driver. Thankfully, there are some witnesses. Up that way. Walking. Yeah, he's got red t shirt, grey beard, and black turban. He's got a craggy beard. He's fairly old, he's trapped. He's staggering everywhere. He can hardly right. stand up. Right. How long ago going up that way? Uh, about 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes. He's got about a yellow minutes. lantern in his hand and a red t shirt. Right, okay. okay. All right. So, the driver's done a runner, or, according to the witness, a stagger. Ten minutes ago, 
Danny and Bob need to track him down. Ten minutes. Uh, 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 especially drunk. Come three, two steps forward, five back. Uh, yeah. And a couple of minutes later, oh, oh, sir. they catch up with the man fitting the description. Just want to make sure you're okay. Because I believe you've been involved in an accident with your van. Is that right? I'm not quite. You're not quite sure? Yeah. What have you got in your hands here? Can I just check? Is that the van key there? Yeah. We'll just uh, take all the... What's this? Like, oh, like a lot. Right. Are you, are you OK? Are you injured yourself? No, I'm not. OK. Do you want me to come and have a seat two minutes round here for me? Just come round okay. here. Have you had something to drink tonight, alcohol-wise? Just round this side. Just come round here. How much have you had to drink, sir? Just you have a little seat in there, my friend. Thank you. The man's fairly incoherent and reeks of booze. How much have you had to drink tonight, sir? Not a lot. Not a lot? OK. Do you want to tell me what's happened or where you're going now? I'm going home. You're going home? Is it your van? Yes. OK. Obviously, I, I can smell some alcohol in your breath, OK? Um, so I'm going to request a breath test from you, a roadside breath test. Have you given one of these before? I have. OK. But he won't be doing one here. Guess we're working earlier on, won't it? Right. The breath test kit's on the blink. Given the man's behaviour and odour, Bob's got enough grounds to nick him on suspicion of drink driving. I can, I can obviously smell that alcohol, it's quite strong, and you, you look a little bit unfit, the way you're kind of walking, and from the witnesses, you seem to be staggering. Uh, we haven't got a breath kit, uh, which is working. So at this moment in time, I'm going to tell you that you're under arrest for being unfit to drive whilst under the influence of drink, OK? OK, so um, we've found the gentleman as described by uh, people back down there, but as you can see, he's clearly in drink. Um, his breath kit won't work in, so I've, uh, he's been arrested on suspicion of being unfit to drink. We'll take him to the police station where he can blow the machine and we'll find out how much alcohol's in his body. Returning to the scene of the crash, it's clear that the driver was lucky not to have added to the more than 9,000 people killed or injured on the UK's roads each year due to drink driving. He has actually hit this. Oh, he's still sturdy enough, but... He's right, but that's, that's what has stopped him, or else he'd have probably carried on going over the, over the bollards, wouldn't he? Uh, they're only here to highlight the fact, a bit of a chicane to slow vehicles down, I think. Drink driving is, you know, a bit of a bugbear of mine, and this child, I mean, he's, he's really drunk, isn't he? You know, staggering about, and like you say, I don't know where he's going, where he's been, but he's from Huddersfield, which is a good, I don't know, nine, ten mile away. You know, he's lucky he has it, this, come to a stop, and not, like you say, hit somebody else or, you know, kill somebody. Back at the Nick, the man gets on the intoxilizer. Blah, 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 blah. Bit more, bit more, bit more. That's it. Well done. Stop. And gives the result Bob expected. OK, so you've blown 81. Well, it's near over twice the limit, isn't it? OK. The man was later convicted of drink driving. He was banned for 18 months and fined £525, including costs. Bob's nicked hundreds of drink drivers over the years and still can't understand why people do it. These people take them, the, the risks of drinking and driving and, well, it beggars belief, but, yeah, they get involved in these collisions, do they? And, well, I've not to say for that, really. I just don't know. They're, uh, yeah, mad. You can hide, but not for long, as the law catches up with criminals on the run in new manhunt. Catch me if you can, Thursday at 8. Tony Robinson's a wanted man next as hungry alligators eye him up for lunch in the final leg of Around the World by Train, new after the break. <laughs> 